Hello everyone, I got another video for you guys today and it's going to be for the Respawn Recruits uh, Challenge again for the Invitationals. This is going to be the second part I kind of alluded to in the previous video. Me and my brother decided to collab again and do a podcast and we talked about the video game that we played. We talked about, you know, taking care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, all that stuff while, you know, being a content creator, especially coming from his standpoint, being in the Air Force and still being in and about to retire pretty soon and me having mental issues due to the military and becoming a veteran where we're getting out we kind of talked about from those unique perspectives and stuff like that as far as what you should be doing as a content creator where your priorities should lie the types of content creation you should be doing etc and um this is a little bit less scripted i would say that's why it's like three, almost three hours long i think or something like that so definitely feel free to put headphones on and just have it playing in the background let us know in the comments below if this is something that you would be interested in seeing i would say in the future wherever for some more episodes we're not sure if we're gonna do this like every other week or you know once a month or something like that sit down and talk we'll just see and test the waters and see what people want to see um again i know this is not the traditional content that you hear the subscribe for mostly y'all subscribe for the product reviews and the other half for the content creation education so this is coming out of left field and i'm not even sure if you know people are going to like that i'm doing this but again product reviews are still trying to go up and content creation education episodes are still going up every monday i'm still trying to plan things out wherever i have them uploaded and everything like that so don't worry that that's content is not going anywhere this is just content for again the respawn recruits uh challenge or whatever that respawn is putting on with that being said Thank you guys for understanding and being patient with those types of videos and understanding with having these type of videos go up. Trust me, I know. Um, but in the video, I would say that me and my brother were extremely tired trying to do this podcast and everything because it was the only day that we could do stuff. My wife had got sick or wherever and I had to watch my son for almost 24 hours and then sleep and then off a of four hour sleep, do that recording session and and then go on to doing the podcast or whatever because this is the only day that we could have done anything. Um, so it's just, you know, we were pushed, our backs were against the wall trying to do this stuff. So do, please do excuse us being tired and, and sleepy and stuff like that and not being so, I would say, structured for a podcast. And on top of that, I was having audio issues with this microphone I was using and I tested it out and everything before we even started the stream. And then once we started the stream and started talking and stuff, I realized that my microphone Phone was kind of messed up so i do apologize for that in discord doing this kind of thing where it's just a hassle so again hopefully we learn from this i would say pilot episode all the kinks and the, the, the i would say the headaches and stuff can kind of get ironed out in the future so dropping a like on the video leaving a comment down below would definitely definitely help help us out or wherever to let us know that this wasn't all in vain with that being said hopefully you guys continue to have a squid-tastic day god bless you and yours and deuces everybody enjoy the podcast um, the ability to go ahead and do this more often, possibly. Again, Platt's my brother. Uh, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, we're just, <laughs> you know, I would say kind of people just who got into content creation. I want to say I got in a little bit before him. Um, yeah, but yeah, years. hopefully, hopefully, like I said, if we want to continue to do this kind of thing, wherever, maybe in the future we can have some sponsors. Uh, I might go ahead and talk to Glitch. I'm sponsored by them, which is an energy supplement company. And I'm also sponsored by Fine Vine, which is a microphone company. So maybe in the future we can have like a sponsor segment and stuff, tell you guys about something um, as far as that goes. But right now, just straight out the box, we're just going to, you know, tr test this out. It's like a pilot episode, I would say, to see if anybody's like kind of interested in this. So like the overlays, everything was just kind of done. Um, fair to moment. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> um, we played a game though, didn't we, brother? Uh, to, oh my god! Recorded, <laughs> recorded the game about three hours worth of uh, mm. was playing the game, and um, it was it was the it was an experience. It was an experience. So uh, for those I, I'm recording right this podcast right now, so people who probably seen it, this will probably come after that video. But um, yeah, you want to tell them about the, the game a little bit? I don't yeah tell so experience. i don't even remember the game what is it don's land don land like bro it's a free game out on steam you if you forced me it. to play by the way i want to say that he forced me to play this game yeah okay. I'm, I'm i'm the one that forced him to play this game you know what i mean play a game that we both don't normally play in a genre we don't play in at all <laughs> like yeah that was all me so I was like, yo, this is free. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it is 
like uh so is your i would say like a typical like kind of like farming built world building type of venture game role playing game and it honestly like I, I think we came to the consensus of like about like a at a scale of 5 like a 2.5 for us like we had our critiques that knocked it down but then also knocked it down it's like it's just not the game for us we see like maybe like once in a while like once a month or every few months be like hey you want to go hop back on that game and grind out a little bit for a couple hours it's one of those for us because like man it, it just starting off just loading in i had issues because one i'm blind for some reason and didn't know how to like authenticate like yes i read your terms of service like nobody really reads that you just click the button and keep moving but it didn't let me do that and then we went into the settings to look at the actual like you know change the graphics you know whatever so we're not overtasking whatever and then on top of that <laughs> trying to look at the key binds bro oh my god the key binds, the man. key binds on that thing binds. i'm like bro Jeez, it's like bro. i am not freaking like paul bunyan with these giant fingers where i can reach across like the other side of my keyboard and i got a 60 percent keyboard and bro like it was like, yo, your was it the ampersand or whatever, or your backslash you had to use? I'm just like, yo, am I Bro, taking my hand off my mouse? I don't, I don't know who. <laughs> maybe it's people who play these types of games. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, maybe this, the, those are the type of keys they play, like they use or whatever. But I, I, I know people use this escape key, but it's like, I mean, that's what I got. Like, I, I don't know. It's just kind of, it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's just it's having that as an actual like a key to actually use in game i don't know like yeah it's weird. it's like who who key binds the backslash like bro it, no or the ampers like dude what like no that's that's not a thing like i don't i don't yeah uh, it was a little weird and then you couldn't remap your keys like the number oh keys God. and stuff and i'm like why yeah. can't i remap the number it's key just... like i was so weirded out i was just like so it, that's how the game started off and then it, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, wasn't a good experience starting off, and it took us. It was like an hour and twenty minutes or something like that just to be able to play with each yeah. other. Like I don't know. I'll hope you pinned it to the pin comment or whatever, so it should be good if anybody comes in. I totally forgot about that feature. I appreciate it. You don't have to keep posting it though, because everybody who comes in oh, should yeah. be able to see that. It's a pin comment at the top, so we good. Yep. Like that custom, customize it. See, Hove knows stuff I don't even know, and I've been on the probably kicker more than he has, but he's already on top of it. That's a moderator for you. Good job, man. Good job. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I wish I could wish I could shake your hand. Hove, maybe we can get you on a podcast sometime, man. Because I know you got a webcam and everything, and I know you'd be streaming and stuff and <clears throat> prior military stuff. But um but yeah, um it was just weird, man. Like the selection of like, like just the settings. I, I think in general, like I know it was kind of like, like you said, we, we we don't really play that kind of genre of um of games. So it's like, what? How do we like review something like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do we? Because we might find it weird, like it took us like an hour and twenty minutes, like to get together to to actually like play on the same server, um, the whole keybind thing or wherever. Like that might be something, you know. what I'm saying that's uh vindicative of like the genre of video games that we yeah. you know ended up playing today. Whereas like when I play Minecraft, like we were we kind of talked about it a little bit in the review thing where Minecraft, like is kind of similar as far as that genre like survival crafting like open world um but at the same time when it comes to keyboard and mouse at least like you can use a scroll wheel i think i just mentioned it to uh go through like your inventory or wherever what you can put in your hands like stuff like that and then like the crafting menu was a little bit better in minecraft because you see everything and this one you have to go into this menu and then then leave that menu and go into this menu and then leave that menu to go find this menu that's buried in another menu that was in another menu. And it's like, I, I don't know, but I, I I don't think we really talked about the gameplay loop too much in that because we ended up getting gear checked. So it's yeah. like, 
but the gameplay loop, I mean, it was, it, 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 I don't want to say it felt generic, but it felt like just normal, I would say. Like the n normal, what you expect from a um, kind of looting, survival, crafting, having to, I don't think we had to worry about drinking, but we had to worry about eating. Um, I did yeah. see, I did notice, I didn't think we talked about it, but I did notice the whole um, being like wet or um, cold and and uh, like warm and stuff like that. Yeah. Like the temperature thing. I did notice that. I don't think we mentioned that. Um, yeah. I don't, I think, think, it was, I don't think it was like that much impactful though. Like, yeah. Probably not in that environment because it was like a uh, kind of like a wilderness environment. So it's kind of the temperature kind of staying the same, but I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure there's like other zones that are like volcanic or like frost or something like that, that you have to worry about. Cause I didn't really see, especially when you go to the craft and stuff like, I didn't see anything dealing with like, Hey, this gear is meant for like warmer temps or this is meant for colder temps. So I don't know if that might play a factor. Cause I know with pal world, they have mm -hmm. certain ones that you can craft. It's like, Hey, this is gear that's meant for, for hotter zones. This is one for colder zones or whatever. But for that one, I didn't see that initially, but, you know, what, we got to level nine, so it's like... Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one, what I'm... Like, I think I said it, that's what we're wondering, like, what happens? Because I'm pretty sure, like, what we got gear checked at was a boss or, like, a mini boss or something, like, the first tutorial boss or something. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, so that gear check was, like, 21, I think we had to be at or something, so... yeah we might be able to like we talked about in the future possibly like playing a little bit further to see like how that experience is as far as like beating the boss and like what kind of that mechanics that stuff was um but but the gameplay loop i know we talked about it like fighting the enemies that that was like i, I don't know that was uh that was interesting like the ai seemed like they were just they were like non-existent kind of bots like trash mobs as you would think um but like even like we had to like kind of defend it, defend the like the little village that we stumbled upon that was like the starter village and it was weird because it was like this fenced off section that was like a defense and it was like if they took two steps to over they could have just walked right into the village because it was like this yeah. open path or open road but they just kept coming to like the defensive mechanism and they just stood there like there yeah. was like i understand you want to make it accessible to like new players and stuff like that and you don't want to be too hard but it was like the guys were just literally standing there they weren't really doing anything and yeah. like there was a thug though you know what i'm saying who, who <laughs> on the block there, there was a thug an enemy that was actually called a thug who was just like kind of kind of beefy kind of tanky or whatever he kind of hit hard but even his, his like i wouldn't even call it like a mini boss he was just more like a tougher enemy uh like as far as health pool and like hits but even him he was just kind of yeah once yeah. you pass that first little the you know yeah. secure the town you get this freaking overpowered like sledgehammer thing and you just have to time it because like you can easily figure out the timing to actually take them down so i'm just like all right after he does one swing wait a couple of seconds he's preparing to jump and then you attack him, stun him, and then you just do swings, wait till he unfreezes. He's going to swing again, dodge it. And then right before he's about to jump again, because they, they telegraph everything and they give you a circle like, he's going to land here. And it's like, bro, come on. Like, yeah, it, it I will say, though, I think we mentioned it where it kind of did remind me in those regards, like the enemies and all that stuff. It did remind me um, of, I would say, uh zelda like having the goblins i forget what they're called or wherever like in a tears of kingdom and like the other like zelda game i forgot what they're called but they kind of did remind me that a lot of the stuff kind of reminded me of of a less polished graphical uh, uh fidelity wise of like a zelda game um it had like yeah. somewhat of a shell shading to it or wherever um the call outs and and, and, and similarities to like even anime <laughs> so I'm like just complete bro you could y'all gonna have to watch the dedicated videos oh. on our channel so subscribe to the um subscribe to the youtube channels uh for that because that in of itself it's gonna be it's yeah. gonna be a long video at least on my part because it's like i said three hours we had like almost an hour-long discussion of just the video game itself and then 
I, I don't know how I'm gonna edit this thing and it's gonna be so long. I don't know if it'll be I don't even know, dude. It's <laughs> this game yeah. was weird, man. It was a weird experience, but I think we both agreed like that's this is the type of game that like if you had like three, four friends or whatever to join a world and y'all just like shoot at a breeze or something like that and y'all played it, you know, maybe like once a week kind of thing where I play it for a couple hours. It's one of those ones where if you play the game, you're just going to kind of lose sense of time and you'd be like, oh, I've, I've been playing for five hours. What in the world? Like, it, yeah. it's so, I mean, it has something there. It has a certain charm. But even then, it's like, it feels like the, the way the game is situated and made, it feels like it's supposed to be like your main game that you're just supposed to play consistently all the time. And other games take a backseat to it. And it's like, it's wanting to achieve that so hard, but it falls so short just because of like those, those just, I would say, it's like almost game breaking. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a glitch or a bug. But it's like almost game breaking for like how convoluted like the menus are going inside of it, not being able yeah. to adjust your key binds and how long it took for us to get to the point to where we could join each other's servers. And then trying to figure that out wasn't really that well explained or um, I would say uh, easy to follow or understand because there's two ways of joining. And it's not like Minecraft where you can just enter a code or like click on somebody's name and change their like uh, cause you're a server admin change, like, Hey, you know, this person can, can, can change things within the environment and interact with the environment. And this person is just more like a spectator. There's no easier way to do that. It's like, if I have my brother added to my friends list, I can't go in and be like, okay, I can join on his server and now I can, we can play together and I can do stuff. I can join on his server that way, but I can't even pick up a rock. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's literally where we sat there for like the, you can't even chop down a tree. Try, so try to, so, so dumb. And it's, then it's like, like oh, I gotta get his server name and then search on the serv the global server list in order to join as a settler. And it's like, whoa, what? It's yeah, just, it's like it's, it's like I should be able to like invite directly through game. Like, yeah, no power world has the same thing, but. Steam. And it's like, I can't even, I couldn't even do that. We had to add each other within the game. Like this long yeah. was like 16 digit, like number. Yeah. It was like some freaking, to add each other. <laughs> yo, it's like, what? Uh, it's, and it, it's, it's not like you can highlight it. Cause I tried highlighting mine. It didn't work. So it's like, you had to type that thing out. And I'm just like, this is, this is stupid. <laughs> yeah. so like, it's like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe, like I said, maybe in the future they can. Yeah. get it together a little bit um but it was just released last year admittedly i think it was like august something or wherever last year um it did look like from at least the steam page that they're kind of doing i would get i guess updates or something like that it was like 50 percent mixed reviews so that means like 50 percent people liked it 50 percent people didn't or had some misgivings about it or whatever so i mean it shows that it has some kind of following and traction um apparently there was a lot of servers wherever that were online globally where people playing it there's apparently walkthroughs and stuff commentaries or wherever of people playing like the game or wherever i personally never heard of it so yeah no it, i mean i kind of watch games even the games that i normally don't play i will watch somebody play it or something like that because it might be interesting to watch but not to play you know what i'm saying at, at that point you're watching for the commentary or not necessarily the game too much of what they're playing um, so yeah. again, we might we might try that in the future. Streaming it might be a little bit hard to do because it feels like you're focusing more on it and you might forget to like read chat or interact or, you know, I don't know how you would make it entertaining enough to to stream. But a video wise, I could I could see like there was people that had no, no commentary. They were just playing a game kind of thing. So I could see like that kind of thing, you know, doing good. But. I, it's just one of those videos like I, I, the video games i just it, it's kind of like i almost want to say it's kind of like a cozy game to play but at the same time it's like i want to like the game for what it is but i just keep thinking about those keybinds man those keybinds oh man so i couldn't so get over weird, that the it, it made me so, mad like the and like the, pop deuce. In, the graphics pop in like even with us trying to figure out how to join and and you know be able to interact with each other's worlds like once we got past like all that stuff it was good it's just the key binds like that was still just it was so irritating because like every other game i've played 
I can map whatever keys I want to map. It wasn't yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. You couldn't map it, anything to your mouse. Like, yeah, something you as simple even as that. Map, like, I, I use, like, the actual, like, letter keys mapped to my mouse. But even if I just had the mouse function keys or whatever, like, default and didn't change that, like my brother said, you can't you can't even use the functions of your of your mouse. So if you had yeah. something like that, like a MMO mouse where it has like eight buttons or something like that on the side, you probably wouldn't even be able to really do this or whatever, even if you have it mapped to like the numbers on your keyboard. Um, yeah. So it was just weird. And then like the scroll wheel, that was probably like one of my biggest things is that the scroll wheel doesn't even scroll through like what you're ha- holding in your hand like Minecraft does. Because what oh. you're holding in your hand is dictated by numbers. And I think it goes up like seven or eight. Um, slots or whatever so it's like i can't even hit the scroll wheel to scroll through those notes i actually have to hit the number i it's just i it's, don't know it's weird yeah, yeah. Don't maybe know. it's because i'm comfortable with the way i do things and so many games allowed me to do it that way so that i have to like relearn you know what i'm saying because it's something different but at the same time even if that's the case it still feels like i should be able to to map <laughs> like I don't yeah know. something simple that most any other game you can map stuff out to what you want it to be to make things more ease of use for you but yeah. i'm like yo you got some keybinds on the complete right side of your keyboard pretty much nobody uses those keys i don't care who you are anything outside of maybe like i because like i know in destiny 2 like you can hit i for like inventory or whatever but that's like the only but it's button, like though. And even yeah, then you, you can I mean? map it to something you else. Map like you know what I mean? It's like ah, there's and it's God just forbid, like, the like simple I have a 60% stuff. keyboard. I'm pretty sure you got one too. Yeah. I couldn't imagine somebody who didn't have like a slim keyboard or something like that, even if they had <sighs> a, like a TKL, if they had like a, a regular size TKL or a regular size like full size keyboard. I couldn't imagine. I yeah. I, I don't I I need to like watch somebody like you know it's like some streamers do like the keyboard and mouse like hand streams like I would need to see somebody like literally play and do it fluently because there's no way you're not gonna like take your hand off and be like reach way over here to hit a button and then go back like yeah. I, I don't some know. people game with those keyboards that are just like W A S D you know type thing it's just literally yeah. just your hand and the and keys that most, are around there yeah like and have most of the functions like maybe on the on, on the mouse so and you can't even do that like come on yeah. man like that's seems very I mean, but like i said it's only been out since august it's a oh. indie again it's an indie game it's free to play i'm not sure how big the studio is or wherever or anything about the studio so yeah i don't know that's me see yeah i think hove you you do that right you use the the it's a certain type of layout now that the separate keyboards or wherever or just yeah. the one keyboard. I forget the name of the layout, but it's a certain like actual name for it. But yeah. I'm pretty sure he, he uses it. So I Yeah, it, th- that, that's the game. It, it's called Don Don Lands. It's free on yeah. Steam. Like I said, it does feel it, it does give me multi uh, not multi, but uh mobile game vibes because we didn't even talk about it on the yeah. podcast but we talked about it in the in the review. There is a lot of like microtransactions. It's not too much in your face with it, but at the same time, you are blatantly aware that this is a free to play, give me money type of thing to buy like different types of currencies within the game, battle pass, all that stuff. But it's not, it's kind of like in your face, like in your peripheral, like, hey, by the way, it's here, but it's not like in your, in your face. Like, hey, oh, you didn't see in the news. No, oh, I no, seen in those... the menus like the 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 that's why I said the different types of currencies and stuff. But it wasn't. I feel like it wasn't like constantly just popping on your screen. And you had to like exit out of a window to get back to whatever you were doing. Because on some mobile games, they will do oh. that. They will like, hey, by the way, they will just randomly interrupt your actual game to be like, hey, do you want to buy this? And then you click out a menu Bro. and then you try to play again and they be like, boom, do you want to buy this? Like, I feel like that's um. I feel like it's not there, but it's like on the same screen right next to like to play yeah. the regular game. You know what I mean? So it's kind of in your face, but at the same time, it's not overboard in a sense. But at this, it's like right there. It's like tiptoeing that yeah. line or whatever. On that, like, that, that board is like you doing too much. Because it could be like a not mobile really. game when we got gear checked. We we're like, hey, you could have bypassed this by, you know, spitting five dollars. We can give you the gear to, to activate yeah. this boss. Guy. It, like it wasn't like that. You know what I mean? So I kind of, I kind of give it, but still, man, it's kind of, it's kind of close. 
You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. it's very very close. I use I the feel like it. mouse and the buttons for the figures for me. Yeah, that's what I do. I use the G502. I need to upgrade to yeah. it because I'm having issues with my old one. But but yeah, that's uh that's Don Don Lands. I I keep wanting to say Don's Lands. Like there's an S on the Don, but there's not. But it's all one. Don Land. Yeah, this Don, is Don, some weird Don, Nick, Lands. Don Land. Like I don't, I don't get know. it, but it's like the lower. The lore behind, like, it just going through the motions of stuff, it's just, like, it, it feels like it's a little oh, you convoluted. Even, you even tell your chat about the, the, the scrolling and the text. Oh, bro, the, sc- <laughs> bro, okay, so, the since, bro, since you brought it up, thank you for reminding me this, all right, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna try not to be too heated on this, but, <laughs> this, this is but dude, ground, dude my index finger is still hurting from scrolling on this stupid game. So it's like, all right, so it's not a stupid game. It's a, it's all right, or whatever. It, it, it's stupid. But so you get into the game, you get to create your character. It has somewhat a vast, like, customization type thing to where it's like it gives you multiple options instead of like, hey, here's only three characters. It gives you like nine different, like, kind of character designs, whether for male and female. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, I choose my character. And then I go into customizing. You can change like the color of the hair, beard, whatever, uh, eyebrows, eyes, and different things like that. Eye design and stuff. Tell me when I'm like trying to scroll through the colors. I'm like, all right, you can't click the little bar on the side to like move it up and down. I'm like, yo, what is happening? So I'm like trying to scroll, but the scrolling is going by millimeter, bro. Not not by inch or anything. It's not a fast scroll. Like literally, I can like whip my control my scroll wheel. And it would literally go like a millimeter. And I was like, what is this? And I'm like constantly, 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 constantly scrolling. And I'm like, what is this game? I was like, this is so, this is before you go in to start playing it. This is literally in the starting beginning when you're trying to customize your character. And I'm like, I was already mad, already mad at that. And it wasn't until we were what, almost through. I found out what you're supposed to do, and I'm like, bro, I am so dumb. I am so dumb. You literally left click, and then you just drag it, and it's like fluid. I'm like, that. That is the I don't have a stupidest thing. I feel like this game had to come from a tablet, like, like probably because like the 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 way the microtransactions are, some of the stuff or wherever, like actions or wherever, especially like the whole mountain to horse kind of thing, and it's probably why it doesn't allow for um uh like starting clicking input. yeah so I, I i think that's kind of where it came from but i will say even though you're saying that or whatever that's good for like the menu scrolling and stuff like that but the text is just like it just cuts oh, yeah. off like uh, oh my like god it's the word why is like, the text so, box so small a, why do i need to scroll for like a, a micro <sighs> scroll to read the actual word like sometimes you you can't read the full word, so you have to scroll down and you're trying to pay attention to the story. And it's already taken like like the box itself is taken up like the bottom portion of your screen. But then inside that small little box that they took up, they or, shrink it. They, they shrink down the text. So it's like the text is this small, but the outside box outlining is like this big and it's like they're trying to fit in here. And it's like just lower the text size. That's all you have yeah. to do. It's just lower the text size or make the, the actual speech bubble wherever part bigger. Yeah, it's definitely mobile type yeah, vibes coming off. And the more know. we talk about it, it's like it definitely feels like this game was built for like mobile. Yeah, and it was just poured over to PC. I, I, yeah, that's, that's, it had it had to be because like this stuff, bro. I just, eh, eh. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, but yeah, um, that was a uh, that was an experience though. I will say that that was definitely an experience. Uh, it was the only game uh, outside of like this another one that turned out just to be single player so they lied to us on the page as far as being <laughs> multiplayer. Um yeah. but it was kind of like a zombie horde. It was like that blocky style like Minecraft. It looked kind of cool. It's open world kind of thing or whatever but it had like a little storyline, uh zombie survival shooting thing or whatever. It looked looked kind of interesting. Um but uh apparently like I said it was only single player so that sucked. Um but outside of this game, I don't think there was any other free to play games like and yeah. I know like we haven't really talked about it too much, but the respawn um 
inf uh, invitational, the challenge this week was to do something that we normally don't do, like the con type of content that we don't really don't do, stepping out. And it's, it's kind of hard for me and my brother, at least, inside this competition for this uh, round or wherever, because we do so much. You know, yeah. with me, I do product reviews, content creation, education videos. I upload that to, you know, Twitter and YouTube. Um, my TikToks are my gaming highlights for my video games and stuff like that and dancing or wherever. Um, on stream, you know, I'm playing video games or dancing. Uh, in the past, I'm known to vlog or wherever. I haven't done it like almost a year, but I still have done like vlogs and stuff. So even if I did it, I still it would still be normal to me. So getting out of the comfort zone or wherever, the only other thing was to play a different type of game that I normally don't play. And in my personal opinion, that's not indicative of what the challenge was supposed to be. So it's like nothing really out of my comfort zone. It's like, I'm just an actual multi, I, I say this all the time. I'm actually like a variety content creator, not somebody who just, you know, play SPF games. And then like, like we played today, like the survival crafting game or wherever, like that's to me, not a, I would say variety content creator. That's not a variety streamer or anything like that. That's just a different genre. Uh, it would be different. Like if you were a streamer and you're playing video games and then maybe you are painting and then maybe you rapped or made music or beats or something like that. And then maybe you danced and then maybe you did some IRL content. Like you and your significant other went to a restaurant and ate, you know what I'm saying? Like you were streaming it. Like that would be variety. And I feel like when you ask us, like, like I said, I do all that stuff, but my brother kind of does that too. He got himself a camera now. Um, and he's doing content creation education videos and stuff, probably going to get into some yeah. blogging. Me and him talked about doing possibly like learning to get into photography. I'm trying to do on Instagram or wherever, learn product photography. Um, and he's trying to, you know, get into that stuff. So it's like, we're, and he does, like I said, content creation education over on his TikToks. He uploads his gaming content as well. Like, and obviously yeah. streams, games and stuff. So like, we're already kind of. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like trying to step out of my comfort zone. And I'm like, for me and Squid, like both of us, like our comfort zone is pretty big because of yeah. how vast the content is and how diverse it is, depending on which platform you're watching our content on. Like he does all that. And then like, with mine, it's like I do motivational advice and tips and stuff for streamers on my TikTok, but also I upload gamer clips. But then also on top of that, I do unboxings for things. I've done product review type stuff. And then on top of that, I do cosplay. You know what I mean? It's just like, depending on what platform you're going to see me on, it's like I've done like, like different type of like, you know, taking pictures of products and different things that I have posted on like Instagram or on Twitter and stuff like that, trying to put out motivation like you know type of tweets and stuff like i've switched things up and i'm like all right what do i do that's different than what i already done you know i've done just chatting streams and stuff like that but it's like what are what's different like you know what i mean yeah. what are like uncom like something that's like in a different type of style and i'm like i've changed up my editing styles and stuff like on a how like the different angles of different like how the image is like you know filtered and stuff like that it's like we've changed things over the years and it's like especially if you've been doing this for multiple years like my brother's been doing it at least like a year or two before me and they're like i'm almost at five years so it's like five years of like doing this and it's like from where i started to where i am now like mm. how do we get outside of a comfort zone of something when we've diversified ourselves so much when it comes to our content in general so it's like yeah like we like I was like, bro, like, uh, you want to do something? We have one idea, but then end up turning into two other different ideas. You know, it's like, and I think that's like the biggest part of what this collab was about, at least in my eyes, for us to like come together with another creator and diversify by, you know, figuring out a collaboration that would you know, amplify us even further for future content. And it's like, for one, with this podcast for us, like I've never done a podcast type stream and it's like, um, I don't think squid has either. It's like, I'm pretty sure like it's we both years. talk on a stream. It's yeah. It's like we, for me. we both <laughs> like talk on stream, but it's just us. But now we're bouncing ideas off each other. We're talking to each other. We're talking about what we did and different things. It's like, it's completely different than our normal content, you know? Yeah. And it's like, we're coming together to, you know, brainstorm and develop something for y'all to view. And then we're going to go back and then you're going to see how different we edit it. 
You know what I mean? It's like my brother has a different editing style than I do. So it's like that's even more diversifying. It's like, yeah, we're collabed on something, but then we're also going to, you know, change it up to where it's like, hey, this is how we're going to display it for everybody. Oh, yeah. Because like, like you were saying, like, um, yeah, we're supposed to, uh, like you said, collab and everything. And it's getting us to the point to where we can, you know, I would say pick who we wanted to work with and stuff like that and being able to maybe do type of content that we don't really don't do. Um, like I mentioned, like I do uh, product reviews and stuff. So one thing that I haven't really done since like, I will say if anybody played Destiny 2, you know, Forsaken, I haven't done like a the review on a video game or DLC or anything for that long. And that's one reason why I kind of switched over to doing products because I realized my talents were better served there than doing video game stuff. But at the same time, it was like, what if we played a game that we normally don't type of game that we normally don't play, record it instead of streaming it and kind of do a collaboration review on something. And I haven't never done a actual like collab review. I've done product reviews. I've done gaming like reviews or whatever, at least on one type of game. Um, but I've never done this type of like review thing. So it worked out. But I think the reason why it worked out, and it's not necessarily both of us are brothers. Um, I think it's the fact of we were able to, um, we kind of talked about it offline. We were able to gel with each other. You know what I'm saying? Like we were able to get along with each other. And I've mentioned it multiple times, like on my stream and within my content and stuff, I have mental disabilities, like crippling to the point to where I'm hundred percent disabled. It took me almost 10 years to get like to the VA to realize that, yeah, he is hundred percent disabled. Uh, I've been locked up in the actual insane asylum and stuff like that. Um, not to get like too dark or wherever, but I do have like PTSD, uh, I do have a uh, bipolar type two, you know, sleep apnea, all that stuff or whatever. So it's really hard for me, especially with my PTSD being more triggered by humans and interaction with humans and people and personalities and stuff like that. So I, I can't really interact and collab with everybody out there. And it, it does, it doesn't mean like, how do I put this? It, it doesn't mean like the person's personality is bad or the person, the person could be like the most awesome person in the history of the world. But if they do something and trigger my PTSD or wherever, like with having the mood swings of the bipolar type two, wherever, meaning like my depression is really, really bad. And it takes me forever to get to those high moments or wherever, or feel normal, even with medication, um, trying to be a mood stabilizer and stuff. Um, it, it affects me. And we talked about it. My brother says all the time, his little thing, uh, but about taking care of yourself mentally, physically, and emotionally, spiritually, and all that stuff, which is something that I really like. And I praise him for, because it's super important to do that within consecration, especially when it comes to collabing and stuff. And that's why, like, when it comes to stuff like this, it's kind of hard for me. And it's like, I'm, most people in the competitions and stuff like that, even with the respawn recruits, people might see my content and might kind of, see like the production value and see like the type of stuff I do, but nobody really knows who I am or really interacts. And I feel like it's because of the personality I have or wherever I'm kind of like a stern, straightforward, kind of no sugar coat kind of person. And it's because of like my mental disabilities and just how I am as a person. I, I you can call me jaded if you want to. But um, like I said, my triggers being humans and my interactions and stuff like that, like I said, people can be like the best person out there on the face of the planet. But if they do something to trigger me, I, it's there's nothing I can do about it. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, it's not a safe place for me and that person or wherever to us to collab or interact with each other. And that's why I'm glad this time around we could pick and choose who we wanted to collab with. And it's to the point to where if my brother wasn't in this competition right now, I don't know who I would have collabed with or wherever for this challenge. Because that's just how I am. And not to mention like my schedule, like I have to do this on his days off <laughs> my schedule or wherever it's like morning to midday. I'm lucky enough to kind of do this in nighttime wherever. Cause my wife is taking extra time to watch him and she wasn't feeling well this morning. So the schedule got pushed back. Like there was a whole bunch of stuff, but it's like, yeah, if, my, if it wasn't for my brother to have like days off or wherever, I don't know who I would have collabed with. Cause not only that, like I have a one year old who just got done with mouth surgery. So it's like, 
it's kind of hard. Like, I understand what they're doing with like the whole collabing and stuff. And I love Respawn to Death for, you know, putting on these uh, stuff or whatever for content creators to be able to have a spotlight shine on them and be able to ex expand their horizons and their boundaries and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like, bruh, <laughs> it's like, how do I keep myself safe? How do I keep myself sane? It's like, I, yes, I want the opportunity. Yes, I want to be here and stuff. But it's like, sometimes, man, it's kind of hard to be putting, to be putting your boy through the ringer with some of these, <laughs> some of these challenges. I'm like, it's like, at some point I might have to just be like, Hey, you know, I'm the deuces everybody about. Cause like, <laughs> like I said, I, at, at the end of the day, like I mentioned my brother saying that stuff, you have to take care of yourself. Yourself always comes first and you should never do something regardless on what the opportunity is. That's going to put yourself at a detriment. Um, yeah. And regardless, because there's going to be people out there that don't just don't get it. They don't understand it. Regardless if they're, I would say, um, sympathetic to your plight, there's people out there just who are not going to comprehend it. You know what I'm saying? Um, they're just people that just, I like that. And I think we, I think we were, we were going to talk about it, but like even in the military, it's at least when I was in, it was frowned upon having uh, mental issues or even talking about like having possible PTSD and stuff, especially if you didn't see like direct combat. Um, yeah. I had rocket land outside my B hut before, um, the people that were in charge and stuff like I was working for stuff like the president, like the president of the United States came down in like 2010 or wherever, Barack Obama. Like I was a part of the, the team that actually transmitted his whole speech, wherever he did back then or wherever it was only six of us. And I was part of that team to transmit that back to the States. Like people don't understand like what we went through. I was up for like 72 hours with only four hours of sleep. That's how I developed bipolar type two. And then the people like my sergeant major was a piece of shit. And he, he caused me to have these mental issues because he was like, I was going to article 15 you and kick you out the military because you were five minutes late in the active deployment zone to PT. But the only reason I was late is because of the lack of sleep that I was getting because he picked me for that mission because I was the best in my section. And while I was working like direct, our section fell directly underneath the general of Fort Campbell. So it's like, that's how high up I was. So all the training, all the stuff, that's why I tell people like all this training to be able to profile people because that's what we had to do, especially when you go on deployment and especially the type of deployment we were on operation during freedom and stuff. You like people might smile in your face, but then behind the scenes or wherever they're plotting your demise, you know what I'm saying? Type of thing when it comes to deployment and stuff. And that's what made it so especially working in the information field or wherever, especially like with computers and accounts and security and working with security clearances and all that stuff, you have to be very, very careful of um, how you operate and not disseminating information and information security, all that stuff. So you have to like pretty much profile people, especially, like I said, working for the actual general of the, of the post and doing missions for like the president and stuff. So it's like, having that and then trying to do my social work uh, bachelors and stuff like that uh, having a training on the civilian side like i am very very easily within five seconds and then my brother can do it too we talked about it too like offline like being able to i know it sounds bad being able to profile somebody within five seconds oh, yeah. to, to to know somebody's true character to know their nature to know this person is faking it on camera or this person's faking it for content or you know stuff like that like that's why i just don't really collab with anybody Cause there's so many people out there that's just doing it for whatever. And it's, that's why I said, like, I'm glad we weren't forced to, you know, cause it's like, I don't know everybody, obviously a part of this, like 75 people. And then like, I think we started off with like 110. So it's yeah. like hard for, I think everybody to know everybody. So I'm not saying everybody in the competition, I'm not saying everybody out there who's a content creator, like I'm not like walking on pins and needles and like having my head on a swivel on against everybody. But it's just like, you never know, man. Pol uh, personalities clash. People have different ways of doing content, different views, different. It's all unique. You know what I'm saying? That makes us uh, unique as people It being different as far as from individual to individual. But when it comes to actual like content creation and, and working together, even if you're stepping out of your comfort zone, you have to be careful, like I said, and take care of your mental and stuff like that. And you shouldn't be trying to do something at the cost of your own sanity. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Cause at the end of the day, when I turn this stuff off, like some people are able to like <clears throat> leave it at the desk, you know, leave it at the computer. I've talked about it before about being able to like, you had a bad stream. Don't take that. You know what I'm saying? To your significant other stuff like that. It's just kind of like the whole mantra of 
leaving stuff at your job don't bring it home yeah. kind of thing we were taught that in the military for me with my mental issues and stuff like that it's hard for me to separate that so if i get triggered and then like i turn off my stream and everything like that and i walk and about or wherever into like the rest of the world i'm still holding that and i will still hold on to that for like months and that's like why i was kind of kicked out of the military and stuff because i don't i don't let that shit fly you know what i'm saying like i still remember that sergeant major that like that piece of shit and that happened like <laughs> i don't even know how long ago like years and years probably almost a decade at this point so it's like i don't know but you have to, like I said, make sure that you're taking care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, like my brother says all the time, because at the end of the day, you're the one that's running your content creation, your business, whatever you want to call it or wherever. So it's up to you to decide where you want to go with it and how, who you want to interact with and, and everything. Don't let others dictate what you do pretty much when it comes to that stuff, because again, you you might get that you know collaboration that you always wanted and then like you realize hey me and this person just we don't gel we don't fit together so it's like man i always wanted to interact with this person i always wanted this is a great opportunity whatever but at what cost you know what i mean like so i don't know yeah i've rambled long <clears throat> enough that's that's the whole bipolar <laughs> that's the whole ptsd that's what i'm talking about I, I, no nah, bro rants. like i wholeheartedly <laughs> agree like like some people I feel like just do collabs just to do a collab and then move on to the next just to do another collab and it's just like that's not the purpose of these challenges it's yeah. for you to find like-minded people and create like a lot of it is like if people are not listening to what the partners are saying and stuff like saying like hey quality over quantity some people are just like i need to jump on this collab. i need to jump on this collab. i need to get i get it you're trying to get your name out there which like we all are trying to do so that, you know, people know who we are because we love our content. So we want others to love our content too. I a hundred percent get it. But at what cost are you doing this? It's like you collabing with somebody, they're taking up some of your mental space. They might take up some of your emotional cause things might not go the way you think they're going to go. They're taking up your physical. Cause like once your mental starts breaking, your physical health starts getting affected by it. And then like, mm -hmm. If you're like into the spiritual stuff or religious or whatever and stuff like that, that starts bringing in other things that starts altering who you are. And it's like, we're human. Our out, every outside factor affects us and how we operate. And that's how we get our personalities. That's how we get our, how we talk. Cause it's like, if you go up North, they talk a different way than how they talk down South than how they talk out in, you know, on the West coast and stuff or in, in the Midwest like the languages and like the dialect and just the slang and stuff changes depending on where you're at. So it's like, this is the same when it comes to creator space, having certain influences from others can affect how you do your content and just how you want to produce your content. Cause there's some streamers, whatever, to where it's like, I've used them. Like I, I don't like the content. So I make sure that my content's not like that. You know, it's like, I literally go look at certain people's like panels and how certain things are set up. And it's like, oh, uh, cause I thought about doing that. And it's like, I use them as inspiration of like, I, that's not how I want my stuff set up. You know what I mean? It's just like, sometimes negatives are a positive, but purposely putting yourself with negativity is not like, not the way to go, you know? Yeah. So it's just like, ultimately it's like, you needed to, to develop your own safe space for yourself and knowing what your limits are and just doing something just to do it is not the way to go with that. Like is it's literally like they've been saying quality over quantity. You just popping on a bunch of different collabs. Like and, is and doing what? Where, Cause now you're over what I was saying, Cause like at some point, like if you, if you don't like this person or wherever, or like you decided to collab and it just doesn't work out or it's not really gelling and it's not like it, for whatever reason, it could be a multi myriad of reasons why, but if you're doing it wherever, just because it's a challenge and stuff like that, it's like, how do, how do I put it? It's like you're faking it. You know what I mean? Like you're faking yeah. the thing just to complete a challenge. You know what I'm saying? You're doing it. And at that point, is it like, is it really worth it? Like, 
you going through, like he was saying, like all that mental, that physical distress and everything. Like, that's what I was saying. Like, that's why I didn't know who to collab with and stuff. Cause it's like, if some, like with my brother or wherever, we have this understanding, like we've talked about it multiple times when I, you know, come down to visit and stuff like that. He might go through the same things that within the military and probably even like worse, like actually being in a firefight, all that stuff and come out perfectly fine. You know what I'm saying? On the other end, he might be worse than me, you know, or some, or it might be like, the same like pocket like we both have mental issues but he's dealing with it in a different way than i'm dealing with it and stuff like that but we have that mutual understanding and again it's not because only because we're brothers it's because you know we have the mental capacity to understand and even though like i said some people can be sympathetic to you having mental issues or you know your feelings and everything but it's that whole adage of walk a mile in their shoes you know what i'm saying until until you've been able to do it and even then, sometimes you're just not going to understand it. You're just not going to get it. And that's why I was saying, like, it's better to me for me not to, you know, interact with people just to avoid the whole entire situation possibly of happening. You know what I mean? And that's why, like, yeah, it was a safe bet to, like, collab with my brother. You know what I'm saying? Because we already have a, an established, like, relationship, obviously. But it was also was for me to remain in a safe environment for me personally and instead of gambling on picking a random person, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, I know Hove, I, I know I got you and stuff like that, but you're not part of the, the competition, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. if it had yeah. to be a collab within people within the competition. Yeah, they're like, I know I got you, still I got in, like, they're like, they're like people that are still in the invitation. Well, I was like, dang, I was like, ah, yeah. oh. I was like, that's unfortunate. But, you know, it's like, like, cause even with this invitation, there was a lot of people that were invited that were either never in recruits or like haven't been in recruits for like the last like two years. You know what I mean? So it's just like it just was a myriad of people that got I think invited. That goes back to them saying like they're always watching. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like they're always watching, and it's like it's not just respawn. When they say respawn, that's like the partners and different things. The social media manager. It's like they're all like they. I don't know if they still do. I don't know if it's all under one Discord channel. We just can't see those channels, whatever. I don't know how it is. But I know, like, especially at the last, like, podcast that Smoogly had posted, like, there's, like, a channel where they all talk and come together and talk, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just, like, they're always, like, <clears throat> coming together and bouncing ideas and talking about things and stuff like that. So it's just, like, they're watching us when we don't know. And they know when people are messing up or saying certain things or doing whatever. It's not telling you, I'm like, I'm not saying this to say, like, walk on eggshells because it's one of those things. It's like, I truly believe everybody should be 100% who they are and be genuine on who they are. Not be genuine as like, oh, I have to be good. But it's one of those things. It's like, we all know we're all imperfect. Like, it's, it's a thing. Nobody's perfect. But the whole thing is like faking it till you make it. It's not the way you should go. And just doing stuff just for people to like you is not the way to go either. It's like people should like you for you. 100% should like you for you. If you feel like you need to get feedback, then ask for that feedback to get that criticism, to get those critiques from people and stuff to better you as you, not to fit in a certain box, to fit the mold for whatever. That's not the way you should be operating because it's like, honestly, it's like, People can tell when you're being fake. People can tell you when you're being genuine or people can just tell like you're just doing this just to do it. And then it goes back to just collabing with any and everybody. Like you still have to post videos and stuff. When are you going to have time to like edit that down? Because it's like, what are you going to do? It's like, oh, I collab for four hours. I'm just going to upload my stream. It's like, do you think they're really going to watch your four hour stream? Yeah, that's that's what I was telling like, my brother. Like, after like, depending on how much um, how much like we're gonna stream here, like this kind of stream of a, a podcast or whatever, will probably just be uploaded unedited. But that video that we recorded is like three hours of footage. We're gonna have to cut down to probably like an hour or something like that. And probably like, even say, less. Hour, and just do like and highlights I, of it. Yeah, and like, like the hour of us talking about the the, the game or wherever it was. Like, an, like I said, there was so much to discuss in our thoughts and opinions. Like, how do we get this down? So it's like, and that's just one collab or technically two yeah. collabs, but that's just like me and him collabing on just 
I would say one thing or wherever, or like one collaboration or wherever, it's like two videos. And it's like, you only have X amount of time to do it. Like how are you gonna do it every single day? And then like we talked about earlier, like people's schedules and stuff, it's like, how, don't don't take on too much, man. Just don't, don't take on too much. Just yeah. don't, it's, 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 it's like, not worth I'm, it. I'm already seeing it. I see like, I'm like, bro, these people trying to have a collab every day, multiple times. I'm like, bro, Y'all are overtasking yourself, and it's like that's how yeah. people get burnout. And yep. it's just that's like, bro, get maybe that's one or two collabs, and then keep it pushing because it's like now you're altering your actual content that you normally post and getting out of your know, your normal routine. Because it's like when you do a collab, it's not on your time. People might try to appease for your time, but it's just like you might have because there's different time zones. People have different work schedules. You know something might pop up and it's like if you try to plan out too many collabs and then say somebody has something that's like hey i gotta take my dog to the vet i can't collab no more now you're out of a collab and say that was the only one you were scheduled for it's like yeah you might want to have like a backup plan but planning collabs towards the end of the week is probably not the way to go it's like best time is probably over the weekend or like early week and stuff yeah that's why we're doing so that you now. have give yourself time yeah you know it's like yeah. Like even last has, week, it's like me and my brother off. had the same idea. It's like, yo, yeah. get get our intro video done on over the weekend because the rest of the week is. Yeah, cause I still have not. other stuff because like I have a uh, consistent schedule with like TikTok getting videos out. They schedule just to edit that stuff, so mm -hmm. I have to plan out like editing for my other stuff. Like so for this, like typically today, like I would have been editing throughout the day. I guess I got a couple edits done today and yesterday, so I can post some more TikToks. So I pre-staged that so that. Cause I knew a collab was coming. It's like, you know, this competition is going on. So it's like, you have to plan that out where it's like, you know, you're probably gonna have to collab with people or do some type of challenge thing. So you, you still have to have your normal content. Yeah. Cause it's like, but that all depends on like, if you truly know like your work schedule, if you truly know how much you can handle and it showed with the last recruits challenge, not a challenge, but the last recruits um, competition, people burnt themselves out in like the first two weeks. So we had to take a whole week break. I'm like, bro, like we've only had technically one challenge and people already burnt themselves out by like yeah. week three. Like, it's like for me, like I only have four to five hours to eight day to do content creation and editing and stuff. Typically for like my product reviews, doing B-roll, A-roll shots, all that stuff. It takes like two or three days because like my wife watches my son for 12 hours. I watch him for 12 hours. So I'm only getting like four or five hours of sleep a day. And then I get up and I have to do like content. So when I'm doing my regular content and doing like this kind of stuff or whatever and having to collab and everything, I only have that, like, I, there's nothing I can do about that. I literally only have like four or five hours at the most or wherever to do content creation and editing or wherever, if, like tomorrow, I'm going to try to get as much editing as possible as I can. But the, the podcast is going to be a little bit easier because, you know, I just record it, maybe do an intro or something like that and then upload it. You know what I'm saying? I don't really have to worry about all the other stuff. But editing, like I said, at three hours of footage or wherever, that's going to take up a whole day of content creation. Like that time is just already gone. It's allocated towards yeah. that. So trying to do even more, I would say, uh, collaborations and trying to work on schedules and get it all done by the time that the, the challenge is up for this week, it's just, it's just impossible. So today was like the only day I could do any kind of collaboration. And even then, like my brother was saying, like picking and timing stuff can come up. I was, we were supposed to do this like way out, like hours, oh, hours, yeah. ago, right? hours ago, but we like been already when, done. <laughs> when, when it was time for my wife to take my son or wherever, she was sick. It's like, she had a migraine or wherever she was not feeling well, period at all. So she took an extra, like, I don't even know. I, she was supposed to take him at like four or five o'clock in the morning. She didn't take him to almost like 10 o'clock in the morning. So I was dead tired. I was dead to the world and I still only got four hours of sleep and I'm, I'm running off before I sleep. I, I'm tired and exhausted. But I knew I still had to get this challenge done. And I knew I, I wanted to do something. And I knew this was the only day that I could do it. And I already pushed it back or wherever, because luckily my brother has to stay off because he has like his regular job and he can't do nothing about it because he's working for the, the government. You know, he's in the military. Yeah. There's nothing he can do about it. He can't take a day off or come in late or take a rain check or something like it's it's not that easy or wherever to do that stuff. And like I said, you you have to you have to work with well within your means and you can't like break yourself or whatever for it. That's why like I knew I could get it done today. Yes. I'm ruining my sleep schedule. Yes. It would have been nice to keep on sleeping because I had to do 
like had to watch my son even longer. So it's like, it would have been nice just to be able to sleep all the way until my time that I had to watch him instead of just actually doing content today. And if I wasn't doing the challenge or wherever, yeah, that's probably what I would have done. But it's like, I have to get it done. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm trying to get this content out. So I'm trying to edit it all tomorrow and then just coast for the rest of the week. So I'm trying to get it done as quickly, quickly as possible or whatever, but it ain't like I'm actively trying to go out and say, okay, I can finish this collab or wherever. I haven't edited the videos. I haven't done anything yet, but let me try to set up another collab to work with somebody. And it's like, that's so much on my plate already. Like, why would I, why would I overdo it for what? Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe people think like overdoing it. And then on top of that, doing the regular content just shows like their dedication to the grind, uh, having that mindset of, you know, just, you know, if, if, I, if I'm constantly producing content, like as far as streaming goes, if I'm just constantly streaming and constantly posting like TikToks and stuff like that, like I, I will make it wherever if I just brute force it by just constantly. And it's like, bro, like even with me, I have to constantly do it, but I'm on a time constraint. Most people are not like on a time constraint like I am. Like I have no matter what, when that, when my time, my shift is up or wherever after 12 hours, no matter what, I have to take my son. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like, oh, I had a day off. I can come home and just, you know, for that day, do whatever. It's like, no, every day, 12 hours, 12 hours off every day that there's no in between. There's no my wife watching them a little bit longer so I can finish this. There's none of that. Like, that's just how it's supposed to be. Of course, my wife will let me do that. But it's just like, that's just how it is. So again, you have to be very, very careful of not reaching that burnout, not running yourself ragged. So when I'm editing and wherever, let's say I do finish that editing within like three hours and I still have a couple hours left to do content creation before I take my son, I'm not going to force myself to stream or try to, you know, do something else. I'm just going to like relax. You know what I'm saying? I got the job done. I got, I got the stuff done or whatever. Cause again, you, you have to take care of yourself, your wellness, like your physical, oh, yeah. like people don't understand just, even if you're not physically doing anything but you're up and you're just chilling let's say you're just watching a youtube video maybe watching a tv show or something like just doing that relaxing not really doing anything stressful that can be relief and re and relaxation within itself and a lot of people yeah. don't see it that way but it's like you, you can you can do that man there's nothing wrong with just sitting there taking a break you know what i'm saying just even if you like take a break like a 30 minute break while you're doing the editing and all that stuff or whatever you're supposed to be doing like as far as the collab goes even if you're like editing the footage and you're like man like just take a break take a breather don't forget to stand you know what i'm saying stuff like that like I, these people 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 need to take care of themselves man yeah they need to take care of themselves. a lot of people just feel like i have to do this i have to it's like you don't have to and it's like you might want to but it's like you need to take those times for yourself to just relax and it'd be as simple as reading a book you know what i mean or listening to some music or something like that to where your brain is not being overstimulated by like trying to figure this out whatever trying to do this and that and the other it's like you have to calm that down especially when you're in a competition like you think competitors and stuff like that before a game is freaking running themselves ragged no if you see them when they're practicing right before the game and stuff like that, yeah, they're shooting a the ball around, but you think they're sprinting up and down the court and stuff and doing all this crazy stuff. No, they're just lazily just, all right, I'm going to take a few shots or whatever, stretch and different things like that. They're making sure their body's warmed up, but they're not burning themselves out before the game. So it's like you burning yourself out before the next week's challenge and stuff like that, saying, I have to do this, I have to do this. It's like this journey is going to be long if you're trying to make it through anything so you have to take your time and it's quality so if you go see any type of sports person or anybody that's being competitive with whatever it's like before like the big game and like before like championships and stuff like that they're taking it a little bit easy because even yeah. like for the super bowl they literally get like two weeks break before the super bowl yeah they're still practicing and stuff but you thinking they're going hard to where like they're going to get injured, they're going to get burnt out, they're going to be tired and not up to 100% to go win. Oh, yeah. You should be thinking the same way. I, I know not everybody plays sports and whatever, but it's like when you're preparing for like, you know, getting a project together and stuff like that, are you still cramming, trying to do everything last minute, you know, the day before, hours before? No. You want to knock out things in a certain time frame so that you can get it together and have 
quality. You know, it's it's not like you wake up one morning and be like, you know what, I'm gonna run a marathon. I'm gonna go out and run a marathon. Like you, you don't you don't do that. You you take months, weeks, days for preparation or whatever to be able to run that marathon or triathlon, whatever it may be. Like you, again, you're not just waking up and being like, yeah, I just decided today to like you know go run this 20 mile marathon or whatever. It's like no, you 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 prepare yourself for it. You, you set yourself up for success instead of setting yourself up for failure and burnout and like putting too much on your plate or whatever. And then it's like, you, there's nothing wrong with coming up with ideas and like possible um, things to do, especially like within this competition, but spacing it out and not trying to cram it all into one week, like it's probably the best way to do, I would say it. Because again, you don't know what the future, like collaborations or the future challenges are going to be. So one of those things that you're trying to cram in for that week or whatever might be more suitable for, you know, the next week or might not be suitable for a competition at all, but it might be more uh, suitable for just your own like general content. You know what I'm saying? So just, just keep, keep, keep yourself together. Keep yourself focused. You know what I'm saying? Keep, keep yourself uh, safe. Like I said, mentally and, and emotionally and physically and all that, because um, it's not good for anybody to reach burnout or, you know, have a panic attack or God forbid anything else, whoever happened because they're so stressed out about the competition. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's just my personal opinion on it. I don't know. Yeah, I feel that. <sighs> yeah. So oh, what you man. what you been up to, man? What you been up to lately, though? Like, what what mm. what what have you been doing outside of like the competition and stuff? What's what's been transpiring with you? What you got going on? So outside of competition, I'm in another competition. <laughs> actually for glitch energy <laughs> so okay. i got two competitions going right now and i got work stuff that got that got to get done you know because I, I got uh the performance reports for like three of my airmen so it's like i gotta get that stuff done which is due tuesday <laughs> and also on thursday i got a draft at the draft by thursday i have to submit a kind of like a picture draft of what the because so okay so glitch they announced on their twitter page like a few weeks ago or like maybe a month ago and was like hey we want to collaborate with our community so they did it with their partners i guess last year or something like that and they had a competition between all the partners and they chose one and they got their own flavor their own flavor for glitch well they're doing it for their community and i made the top 100 for it and it was like a spare them spare the moment type thing and i was like all right yeah i think this flavor would be cool and it will be named this and i submitted it and then they hit me up last friday and was like hey you know don't say nothing to nobody but we're gonna make a post about it but you made it here's like what you got to do for the next following weeks and i have to draft up a label and how it would look they said i could type it out or whatever but like having an image and stuff like that so we can get so i can get my full thought across would be best so i have to draw that up somehow i've been asking some people at work and stuff like that it's like can somebody draw up like my idea and stuff like that? i give them thing and i still don't even got the idea pinned down just yet i got like i i, I got a few ideas but it's just like i'm, I'm trying to figure out something that will fit the company because like i got some stuff that's probably out of pocket but you know uh try to be somewhat wholesome when it comes to it <laughs> but not, not trying to be too wild with it but it's just like you know it's a cool thing because it's like they're knocking it from 100 to 10 and then mm -hmm. from the 10 it's like whoever wins and then whoever wins you have to work with the company and then their people on like getting the flavor stuff right and then they're gonna put it on for sales where people can buy that product for a limited time so that's i true. think that's cool that they're doing it. they open it up to their whole community and people just had to submit, you know, their flavor ideas. And it's like to be chosen for the top 100. And it was a spare moment thing because I totally forgot about it until they messaged me on Friday about it. And I'm just like, oh, snap, really? <laughs> so it's just like, oh, so now it's like I got to bring out my old sketch pad and try to do something. So it's like I have to get that done by Thursday. So I'm probably going to be starting work on. Well, not probably. I'm going to have to start working on that tomorrow. On top of that, I have to start editing our podcast and the collab uh you know game review 
And then on top of that, I have my TikTok stuff that I've been posting because I've been trying to be more consistent and like splitting it between posting on TikTok and Twitter. Because today I posted a Twitter post and a TikTok that I had already pre-drafted like Friday. Because I had a I like I had came up with an idea because it's like I'm pretty much doing what I did with the last like recruits to where it's like when they announce whatever, I post a video that day. And it's like literally it's like cramming in like an edit editing sesh like real quick to get something out to where it's like, you know, and I want to do something different. And that was something that I was doing that was different than people like reacting on stream when they, you know, found out it's one of those things. I didn't do that. I did a different type of reveal type thing. And mm -hmm. it's like I changed it up with like how I've been editing some of my videos for this last one. And I just want to keep with that type style where it's like that's separating me. So it's like I'm still doing my research and developing my skills outside of, you know, the whole recruits and everything, because it's like. Like recruits is not my end all be all like I already know yeah. that whether I, whether I get partnered or not, it's I'm still wanted to keep developing my skills and with the recruits, it's giving me a platform to advertise yeah. myself for that, which is always a bonus, because even after the last recruits even though you know i didn't make partner or whatever like i still had a few companies hit me up did i partner with any of them no because yeah. like some of them were like companies it's just like it doesn't like one of them was for some type of grips for controllers i'm not a controller player why what why would i partner with you and promote your stuff get a code and you send me products out to review and you know do stuff and then like i don't yeah. Like, I don't, like, first time I touched a controller was when a couple of my buddies came up to visit me a few weeks ago, and that's the first time I touched a controller in, like, I want to say, like, a year or so. Like, it's, I don't, no, I, I would, like, weird. you know what I mean? Weird. Like, I was weirded out. I was like, yo, how do I, which buttons do what? You know what I mean? It's just like, dude, like, you're going to send me out grips for a controller, and I don't, like, why are you hitting me up? Like, yeah. I don't, I'm not a controller player. I, they don't probably don't know that but it's just like oh yeah oh yeah Understood. you know and then i think oh, what was it another company sent me something for like contact lenses but they were like they were because it's like i do cosplay and they found myself on tiktok and yeah. they're like hey you know here's some content like you know we'll send you out some sample stuff if you want to do a review you can or whatever but you know if you reach out to us you know if you want to do whatever but i was like ah, do, do you want to do that because i was like i haven't really done none of my content for cosplaying on tiktok in like a, almost a year now yeah. i think the last one i did was like i want to say like may maybe so it's just like uh, i was like i thought about it but then i'm like i was like probably not right now and it's just like i don't really know this company i don't know how your stuff is it's like i looked at some of the reviews and it's like their stuff is not typically like anime cosplay type related but they do have some and like the mm -hmm. options weren't that much so it's like i don't even know like you know, sample ones I would like choose out or if I can even choose. And I'm just like, I, it's like, you know, respectfully, I was like, I, I declined. So it's just like, and there was a few other companies for some stuff. So it's like just getting the exposure from recruits is amazing. You know, I'm yeah. not just doing it for exposure, but it's just like, it, it's just a bonus to, you know, me just being able to like meet other creators and stuff like, like one freaking is Jimmy freaking my boy Bobonic Plague. A uh, biz log and stuff like that. The minion, you're terminated and stuff. It's just like, uh, it, I like cheese. Like, bro, yeah. like, there's so many different creators that I've met through recruits that I still like, that I've still have collaborated afterwards. People that I still talk to, follow their content, like their content, enjoy the content. And sometimes, like, when I'm editing, just have their stream up as background noise because it's like, it's, it, it it's soothing to me. Like, it's like, I'm good with it. So yeah. it's just like outside of recruits, it's like I'm literally like earlier is like, you know, like you already know Squid is like you've been helping me with like, you know, changing in like the different things, camera settings and stuff. I'm trying to better my content and like learn different things, how to use LUTs. And you taught me about Zebra. Mm -hmm. I was like, Zebra is like, I have a Zebra on my phone. <laughs> like on my camera, yeah. I was like, what is a Zebra? Like, and it's like, I had to do, you send me some videos. It's like, you know what I mean? It's just like, learning from like other creators learning from family and whatever because you never know who knows something about whatever yeah and and it's like i'm using all this stuff and putting it into my content 
and it's like i've had people message me like on tiktok and stuff like yo your videos are looking crisp because it's like certain things i've learned about like iso freaking color corrections mm -hmm. on certain things the different shutters and freaking aperture whatever settings you know what i mean it's just like i'm yeah. learning that and i'm i'm better at it on my phone than i am on a, like an actual camera it's weird oh yeah like so oh, yeah. it's like that like outside of like this recruit challenge it's like i'm still trying to develop myself because like like even if i don't do this for like content creation for like you know trying to partner with like a company or whatever it's like i just want to learn this for myself because it's like it's something interesting and it keeps me engaged and it keeps me like my mind going and keeping it like young and like hey trying to develop myself and better myself with whatever because like mm -hmm. i'm not the person that likes to sit still and not learn anything and i love research and stuff that is like i would say that is like the when people say pros and cons or whatever or like green and red flags it's like one of my red flags is like research because i go down a weird rabbit hole and like <laughs> i told you like was it yesterday or today it was just like yo you sent me those videos i was watching them and then next thing i know i was like watching videos for like two three hours <laughs> and deep dive yeah, i learned how to create a lot it's, and stuff it's self-education there's nothing wrong with it I yeah think that's, of, yeah, I think it's not wrong but it's like i think it's a to, con because it's like i get that. <laughs> it becomes my life <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that you know, absorbing and getting more information and and learning how to improve your craft i think i i released a video like on i put it on uh youtube as well but i put it on twitter um talking about com being complacent um as yeah. far as like the type of content that we're doing listen to the advice of other people who are bigger in the space and stuff and not really uh figuring out what works for us and too busy trying to implement what everybody else is doing and how what everybody else is saying who already kind of made it or wherever instead of just being like hey this information and this like tips and all this stuff or wherever is related to people you know doing stuff like 10 years ago eight years ago five years ago you know what i'm saying like content creation at least nowadays is so ever evolving like and so ever flowing like a wave that there's products there's there's websites there's assets there's you know cameras uh there's so many things or whatever that allows us to do content creation easier and more uh fluently with our workflows and stuff that a lot of people don't realize that's out there nowadays they're too busy like looking at their favorite streamer or content creator and seeing what they use and see what they're doing or whatever and just trying to be like okay i'm gonna get that because that's what this person use okay i'm gonna continue to use uh my like my logitech c920 is an example i gave in the video i'm gonna keep doing that because everybody says like you just need a webcam or i'm gonna use my cell phone because it has like a decent camera settings and stuff all that, all that on but it's like there's a difference between like you even said yourself like using a camera and using a cell phone and what you can get out of a budget what's considered a budget camera than you can get out of your cell phone and yes there's comp there's channels out there that run off of like let's say the best iphone out there or the best samsung phone out there but these are top of the line spec cell phones whereas statistically like i said in the video people are paying no more than 500 dollars for a cell phone the samsung yeah. phones the the iphones and all that stuff the ones that the people are using to run those channels and stuff and do it successfully, those those things cost like twelve hundred or, or up. And on top of that, they're making money off their videos and stuff like that. So they can afford to get these products, afford to get all the attachments and everything that you need to get the cell phone footage to look good. You know what I'm saying? Whereas most people, even if they don't have the money, and they won't spend on those attachments, let alone they won't even sit there and learn the ins and outs of how to make their cell phone footage look good. Most people won't even learn how to make the C920 to look as best as you possibly can. They would just hook it up to the computer, drag it into OBS and be like, oh, I got a webcam. They tell me this is good enough. This is all I got to do. You know what I'm saying? And they try to be a content creator and they wonder why like nobody's watching the live streams, nobody's watching their video content, like all this stuff. And it's like because you're complacent. You won't do anything to better yourself. You won't do anything for self-research, learn how to do stuff, saving up money and being like, hey, this is the stuff that I need to allocate funds towards. You know what I'm saying? And they would just be like, well, one day somebody will come by my stream and gift me X amount of subs, you know what I'm saying? Or donation or something like that. And then that's when I will purchase something. And it's like, sometimes you have to dig into your own personal paycheck from whatever job you're doing or something like that. Maybe, you know, don't buy that coffee every day you know what i'm saying to save up for like a month yeah. or something you know what i'm saying like there's a way to allocate funds budget and stuff like that learn how to do that stuff see what you're spending your money on that maybe you know it's not actually needed 
and get you an upgrade. Cause like I've said multiple times before, there's a webcam out there that's 4k 30 for $150. Yeah. That might seem like a lot to some people or wherever, but you could save up and get that camera and that's going to put you above, you know, a Logitech camera or anything like that. 4k 30 for 150 bucks. You know how much yeah. we would have loved that back in the day when, you know, the CLI 20 was the thing like, and that's like 60 bucks. So it's like, and this sensor is newer than the old sensor. And again, 4K 30. Yes, it's not 4K 60, like some other webcams out there. But you're, again, not paying $300, $400 or whatever. Because at that point, you should save up two more hundred more dollars and get you, like, my brother got the Sony ZV-10. I got the Sony ZV-10 as well. Like, that's what you should be doing as far as content creation and, and changing up your t- style of content creation. Because, again getting a camera and not using your cell phone and stuff like that and learning how to use it and stuff opens up avenues for like product photography, vlogging, all that stuff. And like I said, you can do all that stuff with a cell phone, but nine times out of 10, like I said, most people, even if they're getting it through a carrier or whatever, nine times out of 10, most people are not spending that much on a cell phone, even if they get the discounts and all that stuff from a carrier. You know what I mean? They're not spending $1,200. And in my personal opinion, I wouldn't even do that because that money that you would spend over time could have been put towards, like I said, a camera, like something that's actually going to really help you do content creation. Because again, you should be taking this seriously. Like even if you're doing it as a a hobby and stuff and you're not doing it as a a means to get money or wherever or to make it a living, even if you're doing a hobby just for fun and stuff like that, the bar is set so high that even if you're like doing it from humble beginnings and doing it from a humble, humble standpoint, you're still not going to get the exposure or at least the chat interactions with your live streams or interaction with your videos and stuff like that because the person right next to you has a setup like ours you know what i mean like i'm not saying that you should be balling out and just buying like a whole bunch of expensive stuff but there's cheap stuff that you can get into your setup and make it aesthetically pleasing visually um i would say for audio as well like there's ways to do that stuff you just have to do your research. Even like if you go down a rabbit hole, like Platt was saying, even if you go down a rabbit hole of learning stuff and, and finding and figuring out stuff or wherever, even if you do that, it's still better to do all that and figure out what your options are. Again, there's so many different options out there nowadays um, to get cheap items or whatever that's below $100 that you can you know, pay maybe for one item once a month or wherever underneath $100 to you know, spruce up your, your stream, spruce up your... Um, your, your, I would say your YouTube videos, your TikTok, stuff like that, find unique ways, even if it's just learning a new way to edit, like in your editing program or whatever, even if it's a new style, um, you should be trying to push forward. Cause like I said, even if you're not trying to turn this into a actual source of an income and you're just doing it for fun or wherever, you should still take a little bit of pride. You should still have a little self-confidence in like what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve with your content. Because at the end of the day, the whole point of it is just to entertain people. Is to have people watch your content again, even if you're not doing it from a standpoint of trying to make it into a job or a livelihood, you should still be trying to put your best foot forward or wherever out there on the internet because somebody's going to watch it. You know what I mean? Like oh, you're yeah. going to, you know what I'm saying? You don't want somebody to catch you with your pants down pretty much. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You like you, you want, especially like I said, when your competition or people in the space that's doing the same thing that you're doing, even if they're same mindset as you just doing it for fun, if their stuff looks better, sounds better, um, just overall, just I'd say slightly better or wherever, and it's because they they put a little bit more passion behind what they're doing, then you already kind of failed at the whole point of content creation. That's to entertain people. You know what I'm saying? If people can't be entertained with you using your, like I, I know people will say that you can, but it, it, people are not gonna be entertained by watching your C920 webcam with using the microphones on the C920 and not having like a dedicated microphone, you know what I'm saying? Or a headset mic, like yeah. there's just options out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to plug my own self. Like I am sponsored with Fine Fine, but I've done multiple product reviews for Fine Fine and their microphones are like cheap, you know what I'm saying? 60, 50 bucks, stuff like that, that have, you know, USB type C and XLR connections so if you do want to upgrade to xlr interface but most of them are dynamic microphones which streamers need anyways to reject sound you know what i'm saying from ambient sound in your room and stuff like that 
So you don't even really have to get into like VSTs and plugins and EQ in your microphones and all that stuff. You could just plug it into your PC. It's going to do relatively decent. It's going to sound good and everything. And that's better than just, like I said, using the headset mic. To this day, there's still people out there that do that. And it's like, how do you expect? And you can use these to like plug up into like a PlayStation or a console or something like that other, other than the Xbox. But it's like, Again, why why are you doing something that's done back in the early days of content creation, back in like 2010, 20, like uh, 2007 and stuff like that? It's not back then where people would just try to do content creation. There's so many people nowadays doing content. Everybody can be a content creator. Look at how many people are posting on TikTok and posting on any social media platform. Yeah. What sets you apart? You know what I'm saying? What's going to at least get, level, level the playing field? And that's going to be audio and visual. You know what I'm saying? Take time to yeah. learn to make your space that's going to be captured on video really good. That's why I get compliments on my setup so much and Platt gets compliments on his setup so much. It's because we're taking time to show love and passion and actually caring about what we're doing. It's not like where mindset is like, okay, we're going to make money off of this. This is going to be our career. Like, this is what we want. I do this for an escape and a safe place for my mental or wherever to distract myself from my racing thoughts and all the stuff that happens with me mentally. That's the reason why I do content creation, you know, and the reason why I do product reviews is to help people do everything that I just explained or whatever in the past, like five minutes. That's why I cover certain products, wherever from companies and stuff to make it known from a user point of view, wherever with the reviews and make it known and available to people out there. So they know, Hey, I don't have to go spend five thousand $500 on this microphone or this audio interface or you know, this stuff or whatever, because that's what other people use. There's something that's under a hundred dollars that allows me to do content creation. Wow. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? People don't know this stuff. So it's like, do your research, self-educate yourself, take pride in what you're doing, the type of content that you're putting out there. You know what I'm saying? Don't just, don't just, I would say, be complacent, be content with what you're doing or wherever. I understand money's tight and stuff like that. When I first started content creation, my bank account was always in the negative because I was, was trying to purchase something and I was getting paid once a month and I was only 50% disabled when I first got out. And I was making, I think my paychecks were like $900 a month. And that's not enough to survive when I had a $600 car note. That's including your car insurance. So it's like, how do you make ends meet? You know what I'm saying? Bank account always being negative, always constantly getting the bank notices saying they were going to close my account out because it was always negative. Like, I get it. I completely understand it. But I somehow found a way, you know, to, to get to where I am today. You know what I'm saying? So it's possible. It's doable. It's just most people are just complacent and content of where they're at. And they're scared to, you know, get out of their comfort zone. They're scared to, you know, break out and try something or try to do something a little bit different or wherever they just want to you know they they want to keep doing what they've been doing for years or what people had did in the past like i said back in the early uh 2000s or 2010s and stuff and they want to do that stuff and still think that's going to work today no it's 2014 uh 24 it's not going to work what you did back in 2014 you know it, it's just not the landscape is constantly changing, you know, the, especially with COVID, everybody started working from home. Everybody started doing content creation and stuff even more because of that. Like everybody, their mom bought a PC, <laughs> like everybody, their mom bought a PC camera. Like a lot of people know about the GPU yeah. shortage, but a lot of people don't understand. Like the, there was a camera shortage, like actual camera, not yeah. webcam. There was that, there was a glass, which is known as lens. There was lens shortages and stuff like that. Like pe because people were like, Hey, they had more time on their hands. They wanted to get into yeah. content creation. They, you know, they wanted to do other stuff or whatever, and they realized like, hey, I can do this or whatever for fun. Keep me distracted because there's nothing else for me to do. <laughs> like, yeah. so like I said, there's so many people in the landscape, the playing field, you got you to gotta level the playing field. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. bar, the bare minimum is set so high that a lot of people didn't realize that the bar moved. So oh, they're yeah. still stuck back in the past. And like I said, like, I've, I've, there's just so many people that I've, people have asked me, like, what should I get for like, like I mentioned a webcam and it's not knocked to Logitech or whatever. It's just the truth that sensor is so old and they don't try to improve on the webcams. Uh, yeah. But there's, there's people that literally have asked me like, Hey, I wanted to get into streaming or wherever. I'm finally able to, you know, have some funds or wherever to possibly, you know, start adding a face cam to my streams, to my YouTube videos, stuff like that. 
what should I get? And I recommended the, you know, the $150, like 4k 30 webcam. And people are like, well, I'm just going to go ahead and go with the Logitech cause it's, it's 60 bucks. And it's like yeah. ma making yeah. a choice like that. It's not the smartest just because it's cheaper. It's not always the way yeah. to go. And it's just like, when people say that now, I just shake my head. Like, man, like it's just, you don't understand. <laughs> You know, say this is the kind of information, this kind of tips that you should be taking, not just listen to people like just use your cell phone, just use the C920 or whatever. You know what I'm saying? The stuff yeah. will come. Just wait until you start getting money coming in from stuff where before you start buying gear. And it's like that worked years and years ago. That no longer works because the reality is even if you're a streamer and content creation, it's going to take you so long to monetize your, your stuff because companies have moved that bar to be able to monetize yourself. That even if you get to the, the capability of turning on your sub button or getting monetized on the social media platform, the chances of you even making money enough after that's done to even purchase something, it's still going to take you extra time. It's not just going to magically, oh, the funds are going to come in now because now people can sub to me on my streaming platform or now I can get money for my videos. You're still going to get like a dollar per video. It's not going to be a high uh, C CBM or whatever it's called or whatever. It's not going to be a high exchange. Yeah. So it's like you might as well just go ahead and save the money to get that $150 webcam. Like instead of just taking the bullet now on the sixty dollar one and just waiting to the future, like like I said, it does happen. There's people that come by and bless like streamers or content creators like with a donation or you know subs. But, but realistically, it's like one in a million, bro. Yeah, realistically, take it from people who've been streaming for a while. Even me switching over to Kick and getting my sub button and stuff and being close to monetizing my channel on YouTube, I'm like less than a thousand uh, average viewers or wherever within 30 days. So it I, like my growth has been insane. My viewership on my videos have been insane and stuff like that. But even looking at people who monetized our, their channels already and doing research and seeing the view count on my videos, I'm still getting probably around a dollar per like video at this point. And that's not even going to be enough to go like to like McDonald's and get me a, 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 a I'll say a meal or something like that, even off the dollar yeah. menu, it's not going to be enough. So it's like, don't wait you know what i'm saying don't don't settle for less you know what i'm saying don't be yeah. complacent when it comes to like getting stuff upgrades for your for your your space and stuff there's cheap options out there i've covered them on my youtube channel and stuff my brother you know sometimes covers stuff like that as well so just make sure that when you're taking advice from people it's not the useless advice you know what i'm saying yeah. it's actually stuff that's going to help you in your content creation journey if that makes and... sense yeah and with that like don't try to like copy what everybody else has in their setup so that, that's a big thing for me because it's like i've been asked it's like yo it's like your mic sounds crisp it's like what mic you have bro like i have a 400 hundred dollar mic like do i need that no i the use the reason, mic from you mic. know what i mean and it sounds like, good the mic yeah, that i'm using right like, now for this is like 180. yeah so it's like between the two it's like you probably don't even hear like much of a difference so it's yeah. just like, there's, it's all about how you can customize it. I got this mic, whatever, because I like the specs. I liked how it was. It was ease of use. It's pretty much almost plug and play. But even with this, it's like, I had to customize it for how my voice sounds. And a lot of people think it's like, I can just plug it in and it's just going to work. That, that's not how that goes with like anything. You have to customize mm -hmm. it just with like webcams. Yeah, the plug and play, you see an image, but that image is going to be dog water. Like the cameras that me and my brother are using, it's like we have it set to certain settings. My brother has different settings than I do with our cameras. Yep. And you can see the difference in the quality and stuff. And like even with like the other webcams, any webcam I've ever had, it's like I started off with the was it the C922. And it took so much to just to color correct and change it up. And it was still a hot mess. Mm -hmm. And even with that, it's like I kept having issues with like I'll close down the OBS and I'll bring it back up. I will have to color correct it every time I brought up OBS. And I'm like, why? Like, that's dumb. And then Elgato came out with the face cam to where it saves it to the webcam and not have to try to save the settings somewhere else, which is great. But it was better than the C920, C922, the, even the freaking Logitech Brio, which is their 4K 130p. Like, it, like it, it's still better than that. But the whole thing is still a 
webcam to where it's like I still had to go in there and change the settings to like how my environment in my room is. The, the lighting and stuff also affects how you change up your camera settings and stuff. Even with your rooms, it changes up how your settings are going to be on your mic. So you're going to have to do the research because just because you plug in a nice mic doesn't mean you're not going to have echoes, doesn't mean you're not going to have feedback, doesn't mean that you're not going to get like the pop in sounds and like the levels and you being too loud peaking and like, you know, clipping yeah, and stuff. I know people who have the Shure SM7B like my brother does, just the microphone he's using. And it's like, like I said, 400 and I think the newer one's like 500. Yeah, and I've seen people well. use both of them or wherever and it sounds completely bad. Like they don't yeah. know how to EQ the microphone at all. So even if you buy that microphone, you still have to make it sound good. And what people don't realize is like, oh, so many people use it. Podcasters use it. Uh, Michael Jackson used it or whatever to sing and stuff. But people don't realize that they have audio engineers who yeah. EQ that stuff. People did that for Michael Jackson singing and stuff, even though he used a microphone. People on podcasts, they don't realize that they have somebody sitting there at a podcast like station, like a Mackie DLZ creator or a Rode uh, podcaster or something like that. They have one of those devices one of those massive room devices or whatever that's taking up so much room on their table and they have the people programming it and EQing it and adjusting levels and stuff like that while they're yeah, doing on that the stuff. fly. Because yeah, they have a headset on and they're listening to that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody else is filtering that for you. Yep. And, and it's like now you that. have to, like, literally, it's like when people come into content creation, a lot of them think it's just like, oh, I just got to plug in my console into my PC and start gaming, plug in a mic, get a headset on, and I'm good. It's like, no, you're your own producer, you're your own editor, you're your own telecaster, you're your own audio engineer, you're your own effects person, your own your own visual person. Like, bro, you're you have you take on so many hats by becoming a content creator. Yep. Unless you have the money to go pay, but it's like, I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure like the millions on millions of people that stream, probably like one percent can afford all that. And then, just saying. I I would say from my perspective, the, the, the best editor that I know personally or wherever that I have personal contacts with and stuff and everything, um, just to get him to edit my, my pro, my product photography videos and stuff like that. And not, or my product review videos and everything we were talking and I was going to pay him monthly and it was going to be between 200 and $300. I think it was like 200 and like 60 to like $80 or something like that. And it was going to be like a video released a week like every Monday. So it's like four or five videos a month and I'm paying them that much or whatever to do that. And that's including, um, like I said, editing and stuff like that. Yes, I could do the color correction and all this stuff myself because I have like all the capabilities to like apply LUTs and all that stuff. But he's he's not like doing the B-roll, like I'm doing the B-roll, shooting that, getting a camera slider, doing all that stuff, wherever that's still like hours and hours of work can take like eight hours to do a whole entire video and then I have to ship it to him. He has to edit it, EQ the microphones, make sure all the stuff is leveled, making sure like the product and all this, like getting all that stuff. And even with him, me doing most of the work as far as already for him and giving it to him and just him like putting the B roll in and stuff like that. Cause I can EQ the microphone and have it color corrected. And all he has to do is just splice the video together. It's still going to be around, like I said, between 200 and $300 a month. And that's for an actual really decent, good, like editor, not like something off Fiber. of fiber <laughs> where they're barely editing your videos or even something like me or just like even you as a content creator who edits their videos. I'm talking about this guy is top notch quality and he was willing to. And that was like a deal he was giving me because for what I was asking, you could have easily paid 300, 400, maybe even $500 a month for an editor of his caliber. So it's like, he was just kind of giving me that bro discount kind of thing. So it's like, you have to realize, like, like I said, the bar is set so high, man. Like you have to oh, realize yeah. like getting by, like he was saying, like the C920s and stuff. Cause even though Logic Tech actually, I think like two days ago or on Friday or Thursday released a new camera and I watched a review on it and the sensor is still old sensor, even that they won't divulge what type of sensor it is or anything like that. But it's still, I could tell by the video and what he was doing, it looks a little bit better than the C920, but it's still an old outdated sensor. And yes, like the one from Elgato, the 1080p, the 4k one and ones I covered from like Onsbot and even the Onsbot 4k 30 sensors there are newer sensors and i think um elgato works with zeist which is actually a company that does actual camera lenses that's why it looks so good because i partnered with them for that but again at the end of the day 
even if you have the the shutter speed, the ISO controls, the color temperature, all that stuff, it's still a small sensor. It's still a fixed like lens sensor or whatever. It still doesn't go down that much in f-stop and stuff. There's so much mechanics and stuff inside of a lens that yeah, it will get you by for streaming if you know how to control your lighting and stuff like that. And it's very important to do that as far as like key lights and background lights and practical lights and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's still a webcam that's attached to your deck. You can't go out and vlog. You know what I'm saying? Some yeah. of these webcams cost a lot. Like the Onsbot Tiny 2 that I, I did a review on and kind of recommend, it's $300 or something like that. The the Elgato camera that my brother got to wherever the 4K60, that's like $300, almost $400. Like at that point, like I said earlier, you can save up two hundred dollars more and get you the Sony ZV-10, which we're both using with interchangeable lenses, and you can get a decent lens or whatever for less than I think like one hundred and ninety-eight dollars to almost three hundred dollars or whatever for a decent wide enough lens for vlogging and sitting here having a webcam. So it allows you to diversify your content. A lot of people won't go that far because they're like, whoa, 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 that's way too expensive. I'm not doing that. And like I said in my Twitter video, that's what's holding you back because you're just being, you're just being complicit. You're just, you're just being, you're just standing there stagnant because you rather not spend that money because that's too much money for you. And it's like at this day and age, it's like maybe content creation is not for you because again, you can get by with those webcams, but some people won't go as far as even paying, like I said, the $150 for a 4K30 webcam that yeah. has a way to crop in or wherever and track you like it's digital crop. So it's not as intuitive as the, the tiny two where we're being gimbal and stuff like that. It's like a fixed camera, but it still has that capability. 4k 30 for $150 is really, really good. But like I said, people won't spend money on that. They won't. Yeah. Or you get the opposite where like my brother was saying, they will go out and get the Shure SM7B, which is $500. Instead of being like, hey, that $500, that could have been allocated towards the $150 webcam and a decent mic for below $100, which there's yeah. plenty of companies out there that do that. And then you can still and, have money left over to get a mixer. Like, yeah. That like, it, it's that. like some, like people don't want to do that. It's like, they want to go, oh, I need to go drop like five grand just ball out. on everything. And it's just like, you don't need a ball out because it's like, say you don't end up doing this for a long mm -hmm. time. And you're like, well, Platt, what happened if you stop? It's one of those things. It's like, like I like I'm a bowler. I like to go bowling and stuff. I have thousands of dollar, like a few thousand, like put into like my, between my bowling balls, the cleaning, the shoes, the bag, and different things like that. I still bowl, my, maybe not as much, but it's like I have certain hobbies that I put money into that I continue to do over the years because I put, invest that money into a longevity. People are like, well, maybe they will too. I've seen a lot of people that have just dropped like right off rip within the first month, like several grand. And then after six months, nothing. Yeah. There's, like I, I literally, like, like literally they, they don't use any of it. Cause like I have a coworker or whatever. He, we started streaming at the same time after like maybe six months, like he was done. And he, like, he went and bought like a good microphone. He went and bought a stream deck. He went and bought a mixer and all this other stuff. And then now all he uses is the microphone, which is a good mic. Like he got himself yeah. a good mic and stuff like that. So we're like, you know, it's good, but he's dropped hundreds of dollars, to like almost a thousand dollars on his streaming setup thing, getting him a, like a webcam and all this other stuff. But then after six months, it was just nothing mm -hmm. because it's just like it, it you know, like he, it just wasn't feeling it. And then yeah. also it's like, it went into like, Hey, he ended up having a kid. He moved you know you know his wife's schedule changed and different things like that there's other outside factors so it's just like when you don't know when all these outside factors are going to be it's like yo, know, you need to manage your money a little bit better because it's like buying a 150 dollar webcam is not that bad that's literally like you saving up freaking 20 dollars a month like 20 dollars putting 20 dollars away a month for about like seven months you can go get it it's like well yeah. seven months is a long time it's like bro 2023 is over you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. bro, we're already like this about be four months like, in. Just go ahead and start. Just go ahead and start. Get all the stuff while you're starting and while you're doing. No, you, there's nothing wrong yeah. with putting it off until you have all the right equipment. Like, and yeah, even over if you get time, all the right equipment, bro. like, like you said, like getting all that stuff or whatever, and then not doing it at all. That's why I got what I did get when I got my back pay and all that stuff, and I used my money correctly because, like, my brother knows, like, the the cameras that we got or whatever are entry level, like 
cameras. They're not yeah. like full frame, like thousand dollar cameras and stuff like that. They're like five hundred thousand two grand, like bro. Yeah, with no, the lenses and all like, stuff. I got the right tool for the right job because like even if we it's newer or whatever it's kind of getting old now as far as like when it was released but the sensors are good enough that in like even years to come or wherever even if i stop streaming i can still do my product reviews i can still go out and vlog i can still go out and take pictures and stuff like that family portraits and everything if i want to get into photography like there's so many different things i can use this equipment for other than just sitting at my desk and streaming but that's what people would do they'll get stuff just for streaming and then when they realized like that this rose tinted glasses were everything about streaming six months down the line, they stop. And now they have to get rid of all this equipment because they got it just for streaming. They didn't get it that it could be used in other ways. And that's why I keep trying to tell people about diversifying the content, not just getting into this, oh, I'm streaming and I'm just gonna play video games and that's it. That no longer works. That again, we're not yeah. back in the days with the machinima and the first days of YouTube and stuff like that, where you can just play gameplays or wherever, or the early days of Justin TV before it turns into Twitch. Like we're not there anymore. There's so many different, there's so many people out there who are not only just playing video games, they're painting on stream, they're dancing on stream, they're working out, doing gym routines and stuff, actually giving you, uh, I would say educational information about eating healthy, doing all that stuff. You know, they're vlogging and stuff. They're doing content like we're doing and, 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 like you have to realize that when you get these gear and stuff like that to get you the right tool for the right job and sitting there only getting stuff that's going to help you stream is not what you should prioritize. It should be yeah. able to not only help you stream, but also do other facets and types of content because you might end up being like me. I enjoy streaming. I enjoy playing video games, but I find more enjoyment in doing the product reviews, doing the B-roll segments, taking product pictures and stuff, learning about cameras, possibly, you know, start doing, uh, you know, family portraits and photography and stuff like that. Like I've gotten backdrops and stuff to be able to do that kind of stuff. I liked vlogging and stuff for a little bit when I was doing that. I kind of want to get back into doing that uh, when I can and stuff, but like doing that kind of stuff, like I'm telling you, being a multifaceted content creator, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to put a little bit more strain and a little bit more on your plate to what you got to do to make it work and everything. But like I said, it's going to be a better investment money wise to be able to do that than just sitting there. Like my brother said, like getting you stuff or wherever that's tied down to just sitting there at your desk and then yeah. stuff happens in your life or wherever. Cause like, like I said, if stuff happens in my life to where I can't sit here and stream for whatever reason, I could still sit here and record videos internally into my camera. I could still take photos. I could still take that and post it on social media after I color correct it and do all, like, I could still do that stuff. And I could still do product reviews. I could still do uh, product photography. I could still do portraits. I could still vlog like that stuff and that capability being, being able to be that versatile as a content creator is better, especially when you start talking about getting companies to work with you and, and, and building a brand and stuff like that. Like, yeah, there's companies that will work with streamers only, but your opportunities open up more the more that you open up the type of content that you do. Yeah. 100%. You make yourself more marketable by having different sides to yourself than just having one linear way of doing things. Because, like, even with me, it's like, yeah, I got my the camera or whatever. My brother actually suggested, like, this camera and a couple others. But as I end up going with this one, because like even though he suggested, I even did my own research, and it's like yes, it's an entry level like vlogging creating camera, and it's like I've used it for TikToks, I've used it for stream. I literally just used it a couple of weeks ago for at work because they were like, hey, we need somebody to take photos, and somebody was like, I got an iPhone, and I was like, I got a real camera, <laughs> you know? It's like, bro, yeah. you know? It's like I I versatile like made it more versatile for me to utilize it and then even on that i went and got myself a tripod to where it's like now it's like yeah i got my tripod to where i can do tiktoks and stuff with to give myself a different angle i also got a tripod to where it's like if i want to go out somewhere else and i'm taking photos of myself or just out there vlogging and i just want to be out talking in nature or whatever or if i just want to do some type of other thing and i don't have a cameraman to hold a camera or whatever i want something more stable i got that even with that as i even got a gimbal right off rip into where it's like I used my gimbal when I went to a, a, a little lantern festival thing and I use it with my phone to where it's like it has AI tracking and stuff like that to where you know different things to, to where it's like I'm diversifying what I have so I'm not just stuck at my desk 
I can mm-hmm. change up the angles. I can change up different things. And it's like, I've been posting TikToks about, you know, making change with your stuff. And it could be the most simplest of things. And a lot of people mm-hmm. don't want to do that. And I'm like, yo, it's like sometimes, and it's like, I posted a TikTok in the last week and I was just like, literally just posting game, gamer clips, game clips and stuff like that. It's just not going to cut it anymore. And yeah. literally it was like, people have amplified that to where it's like people have start doing jump cuts they're doing slowdowns ramp ups and different things to where it's like they're doing stuff to the beat of the sound and stuff like that adding in memes and effects and it's like some high quality production you just posting like hey i got like a couple headshots in like 30 seconds it's n- it's just not gonna like that yeah that, people are it's just not gonna fight. it's not saying. it's like they're making montages or whatever yeah that people like the montage YouTube. era is like then, done it over bro <laughs> the, yeah they're they're bringing it down to like uh 30 seconds or wherever and it's just high quality and that's what i'm yeah. saying like p- people just think because I'll, I'll do streaming because it's easy and it's like bro like no nah, that's it's set the bar set so high and don't get me wrong the bar is kind of high in like other aspects of content creation but it's more open to all types of people within that i would say a uh, circle of content creation so yeah there's high quality people out there and other aspects outside of gaming but you can still get by by doing I would say the bare minimum, whereas gaming and streaming and posting clips or wherever, like I still do it, even with my clips from stream, I just post it or wherever with barely any editing. Um, just because like, I'm just getting out there because that's not my bread and butter. I don't really care about that, doing that stuff because my bread and butter is doing like the YouTube stuff. But what I'm saying is that my main recommendation for people who are getting into contagration is not even to stream at this point. It's not even like yeah. playing video games or whatever. It's not even that. It's better for you to start off doing YouTube videos or TikToks and stuff, even if it's on games and stuff like that. But I would just, even if you like playing video games like I do, right? I sit there and play video games. I'll stream them and stuff. But again, my main content is posting those long form contents on product reviews. I would suggest people doing that type of content because that's going to be uh, more stable as far as sea legs and stuff, getting stuff like, you getting you off the off the ground or wherever and getting the subs and the viewership and all that stuff if you do other type of content outside of just streaming video games because like i said it's gonna it's hard even with like a newer streaming platform it's hard to get you to views uh, it's hard to depending on even on the games or wherever even on something newer like a kick platform or another streaming platform pops up it's hard for you to even get recognized or noticed or wherever because some of these games are still even saturated on those platforms, which are newer than Twitch. And not to mention if you're posting it like on TikTok and stuff like that, like in certain games, people expect you to be esports pro or already established uh, name in that space, wherever like Apex or Call of Duty. It, it, if you're not playing a certain game mode, they don't care about seeing that content or something like that, or they always are better than you than than they don't post anything or whatever, but they're worse than you. Like there's always like that kind of stuff. But when you're posting videos on other ed- educational stuff, like maybe you are very knowledgeable in like mechanic work, or maybe you can actually paint a decently, or maybe you got a good singing voice or you can actually dance, not this trash TikTok dances, but you can actually <laughs> dance. Um, maybe like, I don't, I don't know, maybe you got some kind of facet of knowledge or something like that. You should be posting that stuff and then being like, yeah, you know, I game. I stream or wherever every now and then, but sitting there streaming, you know, six, eight hours or wherever playing video games and then trying to like, oh, I got a squad wipe in Apex. Let me just post that squad wipe and that's it. Yeah. And then you're not getting really any views and you're wondering like, why are my streams not popping off? Why is my viewership on the clip not popping off? Oh, I'm going to quit after six months because, you know, it was so hard or wherever everybody was telling me to get this, that, and third. Now I spend all this money on this equipment. And you, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's going to be a struggle even if you don't do gaming or wherever on YouTube, it wasn't like one day I woke up and I had over a thousand subs on YouTube. You know, it was a co- over the course of doing this for like product reviews for like a year or two, like for me to be able to, you know, get to where I'm at now. But I, I was smart in the choices of the products that I reviewed and everything like that. And I just was honest. I wasn't sitting there being fake when people were posting videos. Cause like even nowadays, if you look at my product reviews and you look at somebody else's product review on the same product, these people were brown nose a company, but I would sit there and tell about all the negatives, the fallbacks, the drawbacks of, you know, from the user experience. And they would never mention in the video because they're just wanting to get products from P- uh, companies and, and never, they're worried about getting blacklisted and stuff. So that's kind of something that you have to worry about too. If you're planning on, you know, 
doing similar content or, you know, making, I would say longer form content is like, don't, you know, sacrifice who you are as a person, your morals or anything like that, just to get some views. But at the same time, you should be posting, you know, content outside of gaming, because again, that's what's going to get you established as a content creator faster. And I would say better than just sitting there on kick Twitch, whatever it is, and just live streaming, you playing, um, dead by daylight, you know, call of duty, the apex, uh, was it Don Don lands that we were just playing, uh, Pokemon, <laughs> you know, like any of these games, just sitting here doing that. That's, that's not going to give you the exposure that you're looking for. Or you're expecting because you're like, dang, man, I wish I was like so-and-so who has like 20 people watching their stream or like a hundred people watching the stream and stuff like that. And you're just not ready for those viewer numbers, especially when you're starting to stream. I'm telling you right now, yeah. you're not ready for it. You don't have the established uh, knowledge and understanding. You learn your, about yourself through doing, I would say you learn more about yourself doing content creation that's not streaming and learning how to use your equipment, learning your editing style, learning editing programs, learning what works for you, the type of stuff that you wanna do, uh, learning, like I said, characteristics about yourself, um, the ins and outs of certain, like I said, equipment and stuff. Like you learn all that stuff by doing stuff that's not gaming related or live streaming related. You learn more about that. And I'm telling you before, yeah, I was one of those people that just click, click live every day, expecting like, <laughs> numbers to come in viewership to come in and stuff switching to kick Same. expecting like the <laughs> stuff to come in or wherever and i realized like hey it's just i have more fun doing the product reviews i have more fun learning about myself learning what i like learning about you know eq and my, like the struggles and like the stuff like that and self-education and everything that's why i push it so much because again the experience that you get from doing that or wherever shows your capability and it really is the quickest way to know if content creation is right for you and even at the end of the day even if you purchase that equipment like i said even if you'd never use it for content creation or whatever as far as like uh what we think is content creation you could still use like i said cameras for taking pictures of your family or events or something like that you know maybe vlogging experience or something you know there's so many different ways you can use this equipment other than just sitting there. Like there's so many people that I even know that will get like an entry level camera and just, it was a webcam and that's it. They never use it for anything else. And it's like, bro, it's so yeah. much potential there. You're struggling so much with your viewership and stuff like that. And yeah, my video, my viewership still struggles with live streaming. But when you look at my product reviews, like the viewership goes up over time. That's evergreen content. As pe people are still gonna be searching for something that I did like two years ago like on my channel yeah. for reviews, like they're still popping off, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm telling you, don't, don't just live stream, do, do other forms of content. Just don't live stream. Yo, just... what's up LPDC bro. What's up homie? Yeah. <laughs> like even for me, it's like, I'm starting to get into my own groove with uh, my motivational like TikToks because like, yeah, the views are still around the same, but it's just like, I'm getting more interaction with them with likes and people commenting than what I normally would. And one thing that's like I found out about myself is like I enjoy like recording and like editing down like hey this is a like how I want to go about stuff I want to motivate people I want to let people know it's okay to like pretty much not be okay it's okay that you know you're not getting the views and different things like that you got to work on yourself you got to work on this that and the other hey you might want to think about like streaming less and do a little bit more research on this develop your skills develop yourself and developing doesn't mean you constantly stream to become a better streamer like even with me it's like i even posted a tiktok recently and i was like hey you need to just talk to your chat because a lot of people just get on and like i was the same person it's like i'll get on stream i'll hit the go live you know it'd be like my starting soon screen for like maybe a couple minutes and then I'll go straight into gaming and then people be like messaging me or whatever. And it's like, I totally miss it. And a lot of people forget the talking piece when it comes to like streaming and people are like, well, I'm not comfortable talking to people, but it's like, you got like your live streaming. People want to interact with you is an interaction It's literally you live interacting with people. So it's just like, I had to teach myself that to where it's like, I wholeheartedly am not a people person. I might look like it on stream and different things like that. But if you get to know me, it's like it, takes me a minute to break out of my own shell to get out of my own you know kind of bubble of like hey letting people in and had to develop that for myself on stream yeah. so it's like i literally would 
I I set a timer for start off with like five minutes to where I had to talk for five minutes straight and not just like ramble and say like just whatever. I literally was talking to like myself, not asking myself questions so I can answer myself. It's literally having like a story to where it's like I'm coming up with subjects and stuff and it all just flow together to where it's like I am consistently talking. I start out with five minutes and then I move that bar to 10 minutes. Cause it's like, I was like, I, I found some advice through TikTok to where it's like, they're like, Hey, take those, that time at the beginning of your stream, because that that's like one of the vital times in your stream is starting off on a good note and allowing people to come into your chat. Cause like within like, say the first like 30 minutes, like some people get notifications late. Sometimes the notifications mess up and different things like that. And sometimes notifications will get pushed out to like 10 minutes after you have already started. Yep. You know, and then so, like, so allow your time, allow time for your chat to come in, start some type of conversation, you know, it's like have notes on a notepad right next to you. Like, look, I can literally reach down and grab a notepad that I still have my, at my desk. Like I still have it here to where I have something to write with to where it's like, I come like, oh, I got to write down ideas or it's like something happens during my stream and I write it down so I can talk about it the next day. So it's just like, I have something to talk about to where it's like, you're just not trying to make stuff up. You actually have content for yourself. And even yeah. if it's not for your live stream, it's for whatever you're going to post on YouTube, on freaking TikTok, Instagram, or whatever. You can always develop your skills by doing stuff off stream. And I used to say it all the time, like after my first year of streaming, I was like, 90% of what you do for your stream is off stream. Yep. And like 90, like people are like, huh? Like it's easy to click a go live button. I'm just saying like, you literally, you can have like no banners. You can have no animation, no chat things popping up, no light reaction and stuff like that. Hit and go live. And then like playing a video game is super simple, super simple. But the whole interaction and entertainment, because it's literally you're in the entertainment field that is all developed off stream. How yep. graphics are your camera settings, you know, you're EQing your mic and different things like that. How your PC runs, the programs you use, that's all outside of streaming. Your personality and who you are is outside of streaming because it's like, that's something you develop over the years of you just being alive. And how you want to portray yourself, not saying that you're trying to be fake when you go live and fake, you know, your personality stream. Cause it's like me and Squid are literally hundred percent our own selves on stream, hundred percent of the time. We don't like something we're gonna say it if like we're having a good time we're gonna have it it's like we're having a crap time bro you, you're gonna see it mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's like we're 100%. just honest we're truthful we're genuine we're gonna be ourselves so it's just like you trying to just you know try to be like dr disrespect tim the tap man or freaking i don't know pokemane or whoever it's like yeah you can use them as inspiration but do not try to use them to emulate them be yourself but that's all developed outside of streaming. And like oh, I was yeah. saying, it's like, I literally talked to myself in the mirror. Like that, that was literally a thing. Like I would sit there and do that. And then after I did that to where I can like talk to myself, I literally would come to my own computer, look at my webcam, hit the record button in OBS and then talk. And then I started recording myself to make sure that I'm actually looking at the camera, seeing if I'm like trying to like look away or if I'm trying to like, you know, whatever the lighting, how I act on stream to where it's like, Am I like moving too far left or whatever? It's like, am I moving too far back and forth from my mic? Because I'm an animated person. Like I move my, like as you've been seeing, like my hands are going and different things like that. I lean back, I lean forward. It's like making sure that my, my mic can still pick me up at a good level. And it's like when I move back, it doesn't like cut down too low. Like I had to adjust all that, and that's all outside of streaming. And a lot yeah. of people don't get that concept of like, I can just go live. And then some people have their mouth like right on their mic. And it's just like, dude, you're eating it. I, I don't want to hear the inside of your freaking esophagus, bro. Like, I'm just, nah, I'm just being esophagus. honest with you, bro. Nah, you know what I mean? So nah, it's just like the, all those yeah. adjustments and different things are outside of streaming. And pe some people just don't grasp that. They're like, dude, like even, even our sister literally hit me up. She did a project for her, uh, for her college and different things and she was doing all that work and stuff into it and she let me know she was like she she has more of a respect for me and my brother because she it's like she knows we put a lot of work into what we do for our skill and our developing our streams and stuff and like what we do for content and she mm -hmm. was just like her just doing what she did for her project she was just like 
she was like i did not like it's like it's it's clicking more on like how much we how much work we put into this yep and it's like i've been i i've literally been asked at work they're like they're like sergeant like like how do you like how do you have time for stuff i'm like what do you mean how do i have time for stuff they're like like they know i stream but then like they watch my stream and they're like we know you work and we know you work later than us and then you have to go do other stuff but then you're like you're pumping out all this stuff and then you stream on top of that it's like and you're editing and stuff and it's just like when do you when do you have time to just like chill out or like how do you have time to do all this it's just like bro like one i barely sleep i i probably get like 5 hours of sleep like daily and that's like that's like an average but it's like more of the time it's like it's probably less than that like daily and stuff like that except on like probably the weekends i might get about like seven hours of sleep but it's one of those things it's like you have to develop those skills over time outside of streaming 90 percent of what you're going to do is outside of your stream and people don't grasp like like i see you know any my friend streams i can stream and it's like that's typically not it you know yeah. yo what's up brooklyn yo brooklyn what's up uh, man but yeah, I, when it comes to that, I just, I don't get the concept of like, like we said, people were just sitting there, you know, for eight, 10 hours, whatever, streaming every day and then thinking like, let's, it's going to become something like the other day I was streaming and somebody was going around apparently asking, uh, kick streamers, like how much they were making and stuff. Cause they were trying to figure out what platform they should stream on and everything. And it's like, bro, you already, you already defeated yourself right there because you shouldn't be coming into content creation thinking that you're going to make money and stuff like that. Like that should be far, far away from your, your whole thought process and streaming or wherever, like, like I was mentioned earlier, even if you were to kick is a better payout than Twitch, but even then even if you are able to get to the point to where you could, like I said, monetize your content or wherever, you're not going to really be making any money off of it just because you can do that. Because even if you pass that threshold, you still have to get amount of people watching. Even with YouTube, you still got to get amount of views to for people to watch your videos or wherever. And especially when it comes to streaming, you have to get people who have uh, who are genuous as far as uh, giving you donations or gifting subs or something like that. And people are, are just they're the viewers or whatever just people like you not everybody has a whole bunch of extra spare money some people don't even have the money to you know do the five dollar uh, uh gift uh, not gifted subs but like a sub to for them or wherever a lot of people don't have the extra money within their budget or wherever to do that and it's just like people don't understand that concept it's like yeah they might have extra money or whatever for them but they have a budget, they have a family, they have, you know, their own needs and stuff like that, their own stuff that they're doing with, you know, with inside their, their own life. So it's like, even if, like I said, you, you get that 75 fewer, uh, I've been 75, uh, follower threshold and you can turn on that sub button on Twitch or kick or whatever platform. And like I said, if you can turn on the monetization for your YouTube channel, it's still going to be a while before you're going to see any kind of return on investment or any kind of money, wherever coming from that because again you, you're relying on people having money themselves giving it to you and you have to yep. as the entertainer be able to give them the reason why they would want to do that in the first place you know what i'm saying and so it's like even if they want to do that in the first place um uh, they probably think like there's no way of them being able to you know like i said even doing the five dollar gifted sub you know what I'm saying? Or a sub for themselves. They're not going to even have that, even if they want to. There's been plenty of times where people will probably want to give you 20 gifted subs, but they can't afford it. You know what I'm saying? Like, or they want to sub themselves, but they can't afford it. They want to support you, but they have no way of doing it. So going in thinking like, hey, I'm going to monetize my channel real quick. You know, I'm going to stream and try to just get the money and stuff like that and to be able to purchase this, purchase that. And the third, like I said, like you're just going to have to prioritize doing stuff for yourself getting the equipment for yourself and that's why i said don't focus on the streaming equipment and doing all that stuff focus on the equipment that's going to allow you to diversify your content and make different types of content so you can find what works for you and what you enjoy and stuff like that and learn stuff about not only yourself but content creation and get experience because that's what's going to propel you in the future or wherever and establish yourself so when you are able to let's say monetize your youtube channel you have content that's gonna already that's already established on the channel that's going to get you uh, money and stuff coming in because 
those gifted subs, those subs or wherever active subs and stuff, you're relying on people to do that every month, or you rely on the people to renew their sub every month or wherever. And even then, like I said, even with kick doing a better payout, you, you're still relying on people to like be more yeah. than like two to three subs. You know what I'm saying? So it's better off just establishing yourself as doing YouTube videos or a video format on like TikTok or something like that and getting views that ways and getting uh, followers and stuff like that, getting a point to monetize your channel because at least those stuff is still around. Your YouTube, your streams or wherever, nobody's really going back and watching the VODs. The, the, after you make that content with your stream, that's it. You know what I'm saying? There's, it's just going to disappear into the ether. Whereas if you're on an established platform that allows you to have you know, videos being stored there. And as long as your videos are relevant, that's why I say like product reviews, um, certain educational videos, topics that people are still going to want to know about through two or three years down the line to in two or three years, four years, five years, when you can monetize your channel, those videos that you've done in the beginning are still going to be able to generate revenue on top of the videos that you made all the way until the day you were able to monetize your channel and henceforth. So that's why I say, don't just sit there and get wrapped up in just streaming, kick and go live or wherever, and that's it. Like that's that's not the way to do it. That's not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, that's just not. Yeah. It's just not the way to go. Cause it's like you never know how you will change as a creator over time. Cause like even with me, I started off playing Destiny when I first started streaming. Now I play Apex. But in like the five years of me almost five years of me streaming, I've played so many games in between between those two over the years and it's like my games have you know changed which my community has changed when i switched from death i had a destiny 2 following and then when i switched over to paladins like my destiny 2 got people kind of fell off and stopped watching me and then i started getting paladin community and then i just got it started getting back into call of duty playing division 2 and stuff like that so i started getting the cod community and stuff and the paladin community kind of fell off and then they came back when i went back to it and then I started playing Apex and I've been on the Apex grind forever. But then like all the people I used to play Paladins with that they used to watch me for Paladins, they stopped coming back to my stream. So it's like, you know, some of them subbed to me and stuff like that, gave bits and different things. And it's like when I switch, when you switch games, because say a game's not relevant anymore oh, yeah. in your mindset, not saying it's just not relevant and like, oh, for other, and you're just trying to pick a game that's relevant. It's just like, it's not fun for you. Cause like one of the reasons I stopped playing paladins they got rid of their esports so the support for their stuff was went down they started doing more micro trans actions and stuff for a free game mm -hmm. and it's just like it just wasn't funny anymore because it's just like it the content wasn't there for me to be enticed to still play yeah, so it's like i need a new too. game i dropped off i dropped off of that so yeah. quick because that's really one of the reasons i got off the Destiny. pvp and it's like now everybody is finally catching on like hey maybe we should yeah. stop playing destiny 2 and it's like it's, it's so, the end of the life cycle of the game and then yo, like, when they, got games when out they, there, like we talked about uh sorry we talked about uh was it lethal company we just yeah. don't really care for that type of game and everybody's like oh yeah lethal Company's so good and i like i watch some of my friends play it but it's like i'm if it's so good why do you gotta them. mod it <laughs> yeah and i'm like i'm watching it mostly for them not necessarily the game because i i just i i don't like the game I, I really yeah don't, i don't see i've them, played it like twice it. it's i don't it, i don't know it's just not enough content for me it's like well you can mod it and have fun with friends i'm like if i have to mod something for it to be a good game it's not a good game i'm just gonna be honest yeah. with you it's like if you have to change up the basis of how the game is played yeah. it, to me it's a it's a, a crap game mod, mod should only add add to the enjoyment not make the game enjoyable the game. yeah <laughs> so like it's just like I don't, I don't know. Like that's how I feel with that, because it's like your content is always gonna change and develop, no matter how you feel about it. Because it's like either you get better at the game to where it's like you start, you know, enhancing your skills and showcasing that, or you switch games and it's like, because it's like, hey, a new game came out and it's taking over your life, you yeah. know, to where it's like, yo, this is what I enjoy now, and it's like now you might lose followers and viewers based off of your choices and stuff. And you got to understand it. And some people is like, well, they should watch me for whatever I, you know, play. We're all human. We know what we like. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, um, it, it, you had to like, it's like you, you might that's like what, a certain cell phone right off the rip, but oh, yeah. guess what? You probably got a new phone and over time they stopped supporting it. And I think I just saw the, like the support for the 360 Xbox finally dropped it or it's yeah. about to be dropped like this year. So it's just like, 
people still played their Xbox 360, but guess what? You're not going to have any support, and it's pretty much like a dead console now. Oh, yeah. So it's just like, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's one of those things, it's like, over time, you're going to change as a creator. And it's like, if you're already honing your skills and developing yourself as a creator, you're more, you know, setting yourself up for success to where it's like, you can handle when you're not going to get, you know, the views that, you know, I've seen people that hit partner, and then right when they hit partner, people just stop watching them. And it's like, they go from, you know, having like 100 to 120 people watching them, and they're down, they're partner streamers, and you're looking at it, it's like, how are you partnered? And you only have like 20 viewers, like, consistently mm-hmm. for like six to months to a year. Yep. Like, I've literally seen partner streamers like that to where it's like, they hit partner or they've been a partner. And then it's like, over time, guess what? The viewers just dropped. And it's like, but they stayed with what they were doing. It's like, mm-hmm. they didn't change anything up. And it's like, over time, it's like, you have to, it's, you're in, like I said earlier, you're entertaining people. You always have to grow as a creator. Not saying it's like, you always have to be gimmicky. You have to be flashy and stuff. Like, there's a lot of people that have the most minimalistic type of setups but they're very enjoyable because of the personality of who the person is developing yourself and bettering yourself. People will see that and it brings people in and entices people. Cause you go look at some of these bigger streamers and stuff and you're wondering like, how are they doing this? Like for longevity, it's like their stuff is really simplistic. Like I'm not a fan of Ninja, but it's like, if you go look up how his stream and everything set up is pretty simplistic, bro. Like yeah. Tim, the tap man and everything like, you know, even freaking with a Nick Merck stuff. Like, if you look how simplistic their setup is, it's not no crazy graphics and all this other stuff. Nick Merck still plays pretty much with like a simple headset and stuff like that. Some people still play with like like a headset mic and different things like that. But they had people help them out to actually switch things up. So it's just like, yeah. dude, you can't put yourself in a certain box and think this is gonna carry me all the way through because. People have lives, people get jobs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, lifestyles change and stuff like that to where they can't come to the stream all the time. Like you said, video games die or whatever, support no longer there. A new video game comes out that's better than this one or something like that. Or something happens to the game, the game studio closes or something like there's so many different things that you can that can go wrong or whatever with you just hyper focusing on one game. And then what you have to realize, like you said, if you end up switching games or wherever your viewership is going to tank or wherever because people are only watching for that game. And when you're starting out, you're not an established personality yet to people are not watching you just because of your personality. And people are like, well, I, you know, they're, they're not real supporters or wherever if they, but it's like, bro, you just started out. Like you yeah. probably don't even have a sub button on your channel yet, or you, maybe you do, but you only have like two or three people that watch your stream in the first place. So obviously nobody's sitting there watching you because of your personality or anything like that. They don't, they don't even know you. You've only been stream. You've been streaming for like three or five years, but you haven't been doing anything outside of streaming. That's bringing people into you, uh, into what you're doing on your live streams. And on top of that, people will say this rhetoric of like, just, post on other platforms and then migrate people to your viewership and it's like people will post like i said barely ev- uh, effort any effort or whatever into their edits on other platforms and barely get any views and be like i don't know what i'm doing wrong and it's like because you're gaming you know what i'm saying some yeah. people can do it but it's like going to be like one in a thousand one in ten thousand that's going to be able to just game or whatever make simple edits even if they do the over editing mr beast like hyper edits and stuff whether it be short form or long form even if they do that even the the one in 1000 there's only going to be like one in that one 1000 that's going to be able to move those people from the social media platform to another one because what people don't realize it hidden hidden within the algorithm there's stuff that listens to your videos and stuff and they don't want you telling people to go to another platform because they want you to keep people on their platform so you're not going to get that much exposure having stuff that pops on screen about your socials and all that stuff that actually hinders that's why some people say when you post a go live tweet or something just say link in bio don't actually post a link to your twitch page or youtube page or kick page whatever it is because the algorithm won't push out that tweet and some people who are even following you won't even see that tweet because you're yeah. telling people to go to a different platform. A lot of people don't know this information. Yeah. That's why I keep saying when it comes to content creation, especially getting into it, maybe you're a content creator and you don't have that much viewership and stuff. This can even apply to you too. stop gaming, stop streaming or wherever, and just playing video games and with that lower uh, view count and focus on honing your craft as a content creator who does other things 
who casually streams and plays video games, but focus on doing content other than gaming. Because again, that's what's going to get you established, get your roots into the ground, make that cornerstone for you to be able to explode as a content creator. Like I said, I was doing that the whole the whole bunch, just streaming, streaming, uploading videos or whatever that was barely edited, just gaming videos, even with something that was semi-popular back then, Destiny 2 and everything like that. I was doing all that stuff, barely getting views, had 500 subs for years. Again, I exploded. I'm almost to 1300 subs now on YouTube within like a year or two of doing product reviews. Numbers astronomically outperforming the other YouTube videos I was doing. And it's still technically simply edited videos or whatever when it comes to those types of videos for the product reviews. It's still simple edits. But again, they're vastly outperforming. Why? It's because I'm actually doing evergreen content. I'm actually doing content that people actually want to know about that's searchable, discoverable, wherever, because again, people are going to want to know about a product or wherever, especially when it allows them to help them do, I would say, content creation or just something in the office like Zoom meetings or whatever it may be. Um, people are still going to want to know about these products or wherever outside of content creation and even inside content creation. So I'm covering two facets there. And I'm enjoying it more. I'm getting more out of it than just clicking, going live, playing video games and still do the same thing that you've been doing already for months and years and expecting something to finally change and to get you to get your break as a content creator and get like hosted by this big person or wherever and magically like explode or just I'll just keep covering, you know, the the best trending games and stuff like that, which you really don't people don't realize is that. The content creators who are already big, like my brother named like Nick Merckx and Tim the Tapman and Dr. Disrespect, all those people, they're playing those popular games. They're already doing that. So they're already getting the viewership. People are going to look for those people because they already watch people who do that variety content or whatever when it comes to gaming. So even if you're switching it up and playing a popular game, you might have a short that pops off. You might have a short little long form video pop off or whatever. But it's never really going to gain traction. Like I said, maybe one in 1000 might be able to do that. But then what happens when that game is no longer popular and we switch to another, what happened to Among Us? That was a popular game. <laughs> oh yeah. You see, you, see, you see what happened there? What happened to Apex? Statistically, the numbers are dying for it. What happened to Call of Duty Warzone? Statistically, the numbers are dying for it. You know what I'm saying? Like Destiny 2. Statistically, the numbers are dying for it. You know what I'm saying? The games and uh, like, it doesn't matter if you're hopping to all these. guys, hop- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Fall Guys, like all these games that were super popular or wherever, and people are jumping on the trends and jumping from this game to another game to, to, to another game to another game. Like people don't realize that, hey, when it comes to this content creation or wherever, it's fine to do the popular games and jump from trends and stuff. But at the end of the day, even if you're hopping those trends, even if you're doing everything that people, these social media gurus tell you to, to do upload and the tags and the algorithms and learning the algorithms, the, the SEOs and all that stuff. And, you know, posting on the right times, you can do all that stuff you want to when it comes to gaming, but in all actuality, it's easier to apply all that stuff to everything, but gaming. And even then, yes, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to get discovered, but the bar of you getting discovered or wherever with minimal results like I'm doing or wherever in my algorithm and my niche that I'm doing now versus the gaming, it it's gonna be it's gonna be a difference. I'm telling you, it's gonna be different. So you're gonna be way down here. And if you would apply everything that you're doing down here to outside of gaming, you're gonna immediately see that jump and oh, then yeah. just push forward from there. I'm telling you. I, I that's why I keep trying to tell people, but they don't want to hear it because they're complacent, yeah. they're comfortable with what yeah, they're doing. So many- so many people get so stuck and it's like well i need a stream and i need to be live for people to see me it's like you get seen other places if people see you in other spaces and stuff like you get more notos noticed because it's like for me it's like yeah i streamed on twitch for like the longest time for like a year before i started doing tiktok content and i'm just like well people say to diverse my stuff and i was like i don't know how to really do that and i was like i had created a tiktok posted a couple of gamer clips and they didn't really go anywhere and i was just like bro like what am i supposed to do with this i was like i don't know how to edit i don't know this that and the other and all right uh and it's like one of those things it's like i'm like yo what am i supposed to do and it's like yo i started posting on tiktok but i wasn't i didn't start posting more gamer clips i switched up completely what i wanted to do i started giving tick like Twitch advice and different things on like how to do different things and just my viewpoint on stuff as like a beginner streamer. So it's just like allowing yourself to diversify yourself on other platforms. And it wasn't just me just mainly pacing gamer clips anymore. And like, even now, like I 
might throw a gamer clip in like once a month maybe or less so it's just like i completely just i changed, moved from just posting gamer clips and started doing like different oh, unboxings freaking just like irl stuff doing just motivational stuff for like streamers and content creators and stuff you have to switch things up like that's yeah. the biggest thing when it comes to content like being a streamer switching things up making change over time is the way to go and not just staying like my brother's been saying don't stay complacent yep 100 percent. but uh we've been on for almost three hours I, yeah, uh, we're gonna, gonna wrap it up episode. here i don't know if anybody's gonna watch the full podcast but i'm just gonna open <laughs> up as is um but yeah i gotta go my my wife is you know at her end rope it's been a little bit over the time i was supposed to get off and everything so yeah, but, uh, plus me, I got time, work in the morning. Everybody. Yeah, my brother got stuck. I got to work in the morning. But <laughs> appreciate your time, everybody, for checking it out. This is kind of like just a pilot episode. I'm not sure if we're going to, you know, continue to do this maybe like every two weeks or something. I don't know. Maybe it'll be like yeah. shorter. We'll, we'll just see how it goes. We'll ch check the engagement on this and stuff. Hopefully you guys gained some insight, some inkling of, I would say, educational information from this and everything. Um, go forth and, you know, make really good quality content uh, with this info that you got. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, my name has been Squid at Joe. If you're watching it from my perspective on YouTube or something like that, there will be links in the description to my brother's uh, social media. You've been seeing it on screen the whole entire time. So definitely check him out. Great, awesome content creator out there uh, doing his thing over there. So definitely follow all his social media links. Again, it'll be linked yeah. in the description. And with that being said, y'all over on Kick, have a squid test day. God bless you and yours. And I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Deuces, everybody. Yeah. Much love. Flat out, same goes for my bro Squid. Just, you know, go follow him. I'll be linking him too. And like, we're definitely going to try to do this more often. All right. Much love to y'all. Flat out, take care of yourself physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, all around self care, self love for yourself. And we'll catch you in the next one. All right. Deuces. Deuces.